Hello, it's Gray. Hello, it's Crystal. And this is Bus Asian Beauty Supernatural Commentary Podcast where I, someone who's seen this show uh, many times, and I, someone who only knows about the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian. For today's episode, we will be discussing Season 5, Episode 18, Point of No Return, written by Jeremy Carver, directed by Phil Segrisha. Or is this a different person? Because it says Philip Segrisha. Is this a different that's, dude? That's probably the same person. Yeah, but what if it's like Phil's son, Philip? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, or something. No, no the, it's the same the guy. Super yeah. wiki link. Yeah, it goes to the same guy. But why is it like Philip Segrisha suddenly? Did he change his name? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he decided that he prefers to go by Philip. I think, yeah, I think he like shifted. <laughs> Happy transitioning or something. Well, yeah, maybe. Anyway, Mr. Philip Segrisha directed this episode. I would like to say this episode is good. Yeah, I was surprised. Like, yeah, I feel like I, I go back and forth on Supernatural a lot, but like, this was like, this is pretty good. Yeah. The thing is, like, you know, when we say good episode, we always have that like thing where it's like, it's a good episode of Supernatural. Mm. But, like, this one is a good episode, period. Like, if you tell me, like, watch this t- TV episode, I'll be like, that's a good episode of television. Well, okay, I wouldn't go that far. I would say it is. I would say it is. It sets out to do something, and it does it successfully. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's, like, it's compelling. It's... It does something. That's I think that's the thing that got to me the most. <laughs> like, oh, it that it to does say something. The <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. is on the board. No other TV has ever done this before. Are you guys seeing this? This no, it tries to do it, something. <laughs> it's not that no other TV has done it. I think that this is what it's supposed to do. Like, this is the status quo and it achieved the status quo of what television is supposed to do. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I believe it. I see it. You know how, so, like, in the past, um, maybe just between the two of us, honestly, we have complained about, like, seeing the bricks that make up a story and how that's, mm. like, not fun. This one mm. is, like, I can see the bricks that make up the episode, but I love it. Like, I appreciate it. It makes me appreciate the writing. It's compelling. Not mm-hmm. just plot. Honestly, the plot is, like, the least of your concern in this episode. I feel like, for me, I'm like, don't give a shit. But, like, every character you meet, for example, you're like, that's a compelling way to write that character going through mm-hmm. that situation. And, like, yeah, it's it does it well. It tries to do something, it does it. <laughs> Yeah. Also, Cass is on screen a lot, and yeah. he's hot. And also, yeah. I think that this episode actually thinks about Sam's perspective. Exactly. Which no, is like a that's rare event. That's what I'm saying. That like this, the character it's character driven. It's a character driven episode, which cannot be said about literally any other episode of Supernatural. It feels like, like it's actually genuinely good, and it focuses on Sam. But it's not Sam-centric. Fuck, it's not even Dean-centric. It's just like, it's characters in a thing. And mm-hmm. I don't know, I really like that. Because so, like sometimes we'll have like what we call a Sam episode. And it'll be like an episode that considers Sam. And particularly because it's Sam-centric. But this one is like, you can have an episode... That is not like a quote unquote Sam centric episode, and still have his character come out so much. Mm. Like that is a possibility in the TV show Supernatural. Mm. Yeah, I feel like moving forward, uh, this can be an episode I compare to to like why can't they do this here? They did it in Point of Northern. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like 
Yeah. It's it's they do the characters so well and they write them so well. And I appreciate it. I love it. <laughs> I'm like I love Supernatural. <laughs> Does anyone like is anyone surprised? No, but like I am kind of. Well, Crystal, what did you know about this episode before you um, watched it? Uh, I knew that Cass beats Dean up in an alley for wanting to say yes to Michael. And Hell then he yeah. brings him back and Sam goes, what happened mm-hmm. to him? And Cass goes, me. Me. <laughs> me. <laughs> he literally goes, me. <laughs> um, and also that Adam gets yoinked from heaven where his best memory is making out with his girlfriend on prom night to be Michael's vessel instead. Um, and then I don't think I knew the rest very well. Yeah. I knew everything that happens in this episode. And it is also an episode that previously I have um, seen a lot of analysis of. And I have also dedicated, like, because of that, seeing analysis of it. I think I've also dedicated some time in my life thinking about it in that way Mm -hmm. um more than most episodes of supernatural and like i think rewatching it i understand like seeing it all put together in this way i understand why it has garnered such analysis like i i understand because like so many of the there's so many distinct characterizations it's so fun to sink your teeth into Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, should we mention a 100th episode? Oh, yeah. And also, this is the 100th episode of Supernatural. And, and of Bad Pod. Pod, which is far more important. So if, you, if you've if you listened to us all this while, from episode one up until now, if you're a new listener, if you're listening from the future, years from now, and you're like, wow, what did they think of 518, the 100th episode of Supernatural? <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much for listening. It really has... It's been wonderful. I love doing this podcast. Thank you so much to everyone. Yeah, thank you. Who... Like, not to plug our Kofi, but, like, literally everyone who's given us money on that thing. Thank you so much as well. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Everyone who has ever emailed us, messaged us, anything. It's such a wonderful thing that we get to do this. And that we are doing it, even if nobody wants yeah. it. And people do actually want it still. So, like, <laughs> you know, it's great. Love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's start the episode. Okay. Well, there's a then sequence that is really nothing. It's just Zachariah complaining about not being able to get them to say yes to Lucifer and Michael. And then we yeah. find out who Adam is and that he got eaten by ghouls. And, and that's the then sequence. Oh, and ah. also Dean goes to Lisa. <laughs> I thought but you were talking not. about the teaser. And oh, I was no, like, how can you say that that was wonderful. nothing? I think that's wonderful. Yeah, I was kind of offended. <laughs> but yeah, the dance sequence, whatever, the fuck. But the teaser is quite wonderful. It's quite wonderful. And the thing is, like, Zachariah dies this episode. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this is a pretty good last hurrah for his character. Yeah. Because, like... For the first time in this entire season, I feel like, I'm like, I like this dude again. Like, mm-hmm. this is fun. And it is pretty fun. And I'm also glad he died. Like, I really am. Yeah. Uh, but I'm glad that in his last moments, we were able to savor and bring back the things about his character that actually make him fun. Yeah. You know? I think what it is is just, there's no woman this episode. <laughs> There's one it could very well female be that. angel, briefly, of the four that Cass sends off. This is true, yeah. But nobody has a speaking lion. And yeah. Zachariah does not speak to any of them, which is, it's you true. know, why Boy. his character works, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. How horrible. But yeah. So it's Zachariah, he's in a bar, he's drinking. And, you know, he's in his suit and tie corporate outfit and the guy next over in the bar is like hey dude did you also get fired and he's like yeah man you can say that or whatever the fuck and like 
they start the bonding about being fired. And yes. it's so fun. Like, at some point, Zikariah goes, yeah, oh, it's like they don't care about at all about everyone. It's like they don't understand like what being here means, you know? And he's like, oh, it's so horrible. They should be here, down on the ground, in the mud, no simos with all you pig filthy humans. Am I right? <laughs> And the dude beside him is like, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what, what did you just say? <laughs> What's that? And he's like, yeah, it's so fucking... Have they never heard about personal loyalty? <laughs> Love that. He was like, I should have tenure right now. For real. And he should have. He worked for five millennia, six maybe, which is his words. Yeah. Is that true? Um, I mean... I mean, I suppose so, but like... Yeah, is but why is the world only 5,000 or 6,000 years old? Like, why is existence? Or is it like he's talking about, like, the Earth this specifically? May- yeah, it could be Earth. It could be this specific role. Yeah, it could be, like, this specific job post. <laughs> yeah. He had um one job, and it was literally to make Neil Winchester say yes or something, and he didn't do it. Mm. He asks this dude, like, so what are you going to do next? And uh, the guy's like, I don't know, man. Maybe something about the internet. And Zechariah's like, yeah. <laughs> like, like <laughs> genuinely like, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So true. And suddenly, the bar starts shaking. I always love the effect that they do for this kind of thing. Like, mm-hmm. It does actually feel how I think they're trying to make it feel. And yeah, bar shakes, bottles flipping over, and then, you know, the piercing sound of the angel. And then the guy's eyes just burn out. Yeah, and they're all, yeah, it's very fun because the whole time Zachariah's is just standing there like, oh, here's my boss again. Get it over he's with gonna- high. <laughs> like to the guy who's like covering his ears and like eyes burning out and screaming and blood coming out yeah. of him and shit. Anyway, Zachariah just like opens his arms out to the heavens, just goes like, yeah, let's just fucking go. I love it. He's like, wow. I did badly at my job, and now they're going to take me out back and shoot me. (laughs) And they actually are. He says later that firing is literal. (laughs) And they literally were going to take him out back and shoot him. And yeah, suddenly this angel voice tells him something else. And he's like, okay, sure, I'll do that. Uh, And he's like so happy. And he turns around, his buddy is dead. The bar, the bartender is dad, and there's a drink of like whiskey at the table, and he picks it up, and there's a giant shard of glass in it. He takes out the shard of glass, he drinks the whiskey, puts it down, so puts fun. the glass shard back. Love that! I think that's yeah. so fun. And he's like, "Okay, back to business, boys." And then he he uh, he hums a tune as he gets out of that bar. Into the world. Wonderful. Just Wonderful. what a fun time. When's the last yeah. time we had a good cold open like that? I mean, something akin to this. I would say probably it even goes way back to like 416. That's on head of the pin, right? Mm. Yeah. I think yeah, that, that was, was the last time I was like, oh my god, like, Supernatural is so cool. Yeah. Which you you would think that like for a cold open that is the point of the cold open to make you mm-hmm. go I'll keep on watching, yeah. but very rarely does it does it achieve this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, this is true. This is true. Anyway, so we're at a motel, and Dean's preparing himself for saying yes to Zachariah, so he's doing all his goodbye stuff, and. He's packing four items <laughs> into a box, and they are his dad's leather jacket, the keys to the Impala, his special little gun, and a letter to Sam. And he's so true. Addressing no all letter of it to, to Bobby. Robert Singer. Like he isn't even giving Bobby like. 
the comfort of like his like familiar name on this box that he's gonna well, ship. You need and to fucking ship that thing with the name. Is that true, or do you, it just it just needs to be a name that the person recognizes? Yeah, it doesn't have to be the legal name as long as you have the address on. This is true. Like, it doesn't even have to be the name of someone who lives at that address. Like, like the mail yeah, person isn't right. going to check. Yeah. Well, sometimes they do if they're looking for an ID. Yeah, I suppose so. But that's so yeah, fucked that's up. No Since one should ever see my this, ID. Maybe, like, he has to check some special boxes at the post office. Yeah. Maybe he was going to write Bobby Singer... You're like a father to me in the box. <laughs> and then they were the post office was like, nah, there's a gun in here. You need to like put a fucking ID name. And he's like, oh, damn it. Damn it. I would have put, you're just like a father to me for real on it. Otherwise. Yeah. And okay, this scene, the sad music that they chose is kind of cringe. It's comical. It's <laughs> yeah. so funny. Also, the way they're like, Dean is so sad. He's drinking. <laughs> and to differentiate Dean's drinking now from literally all the other times he has drunk, which is like in every possible emotional situation. Yeah. <laughs> like literally every emotion he's been in, he's, we've seen him drink. But the yes. way they differentiate is he does it slowly. He's like emo about it. <laughs> yeah. It's so so it's so um, funny the letter i will admit yeah <laughs> i will admit when this scene played i was like wow we had such a really good teaser and then this scene starts playing and i'm like maybe i, I did like put laughing. too much hopes so much into supernatural being able to pull this off because this is so ridiculous yeah yeah, I don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's supposed to be like, isn't it so sad that this is all he leaves behind? But like, yeah, all of his dad's stuff too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I did pause on the letter. Did you? What did you? Th- no, I did it. I didn't give a shit. Okay, so his head is still blocking half of yeah. it. Yeah. So, okay, so the parts I can make out. I'll be surprised if something, you. Yeah. But if it does something. That what I'm going, or sorry, that what I'm doing isn't something. Mm-hmm. Taught us better than that something. We've run out of it. Um, Where I'm going, we don't. No, you'll look after her for, which I'm assuming is about the Impala. Lisa. I'm you know- taking more for the team. So true, he has. <laughs> um, Ever ask, that makes you an something winchester in my book i'm assuming it's like all right or like something like that and then you told me once that you pray blank not sure if that's still true probably not but if it is give it one last try blank sammy one winchester blank enough when it's over and then that's all of it but yeah i did get emo on the you told me once that you pray every day i'm not sure if that's still true probably not but if it is give it one last try like that's nice i'm glad that they called back to that in some way yeah is sam ever gonna read this letter I don't know why I'm asking you. I'm supposed to be the person who's watched the show. Like, I mean, they do take the box back, I'm assuming, because Dean yeah. is going to get his, his items back, and he drives them Paul again this episode. I don't know if he would try to hide the letter from Sam when they were, like, reopening the box or not. Yeah. I mean, mostly I was disconcerted by Dean's writing posture. <laughs> Because I'm an asshole, as we have established, and I'm a pendant about everything. So all mm-hmm. reflective of my negative traits. None of his, unfortunately. <laughs> That's literally it. That's all I have to say. Okay. What, what was his posture? <laughs> it's like, look at it. Like, his hand is like, like he's oh, going to get crowds in grip. there. Yeah. Like, his pen grip. It's like a tripod grip, but like really disconcerting. I don't know. I'm just just mental, as we have established. So it doesn't matter at all. If you write exactly like Dean Winchester, you're probably fine. 
You yeah. should probably relax a bit. <laughs> It's my hot take. Is his handwriting nice? What do you think? I was kind of impressed because there's no lines on this stationery. <laughs> It's true. And his lines are so straight. And I find it fun. Just find it like impressive, him. even. Yeah. No, that's not true. I need to <laughs> say no, I feel not like. Not in this episode. It's not true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Let's yeah, talk the, about when we get to it. Yeah. The lines are pretty straight. Yeah. I think it's, it's nice that none of the letters run into the other letters. I feel like that takes some skill. What are you talking about? Like, each, like, letters, the letters aren't connected to each other. <laughs> oh! Like, it's okay, not, like, Okay, so it's, like, like, like fake cursive, fake, yeah. um, yeah. Why does it take skill to do that? I don't, I think if you're writing fast in pen, like, it'll just bleed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this is like a shitty motel pen, so you actually have to press pretty hard for each line. Yeah, so. that's why he's so he's really pressing so hard. It's because of mm, shitty bullpen, yeah, 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 yeah. probably. Yeah, I'm sorry, Dean Winchester. Sorry, Dean buy Winchester. a nice pen. Like you have a journal, you fucking sustain that shit with a nice pen. Is what my um, I mean, opinion is. He cut and ran. Like he didn't bring all his stuff with him. Yeah, this is true. He 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 only has like four things to put in the box. (laughs) He won't be like, let me bring my ink and my fountain pen (laughs) to this uh, fucking spontaneous saying yes to Michael excursion. Exactly. Wow. Couldn't be me. I'd bring it. (laughs) You know, he's very somber. He's drinking. He's doing all of this. After he Mm -hmm. tapes the box shut, he hears Sam's voice behind him. Sam Ugh. goes sending someone a candy gram. And Sam looks bad this scene. <laughs> I'm sorry to Sam Winchester. And I'm maybe sorry endeared. to Jared Padalecki. I'm endeared by him this episode because, like, they do something with his makeup. Or maybe like, they do less with his makeup. Like, maybe he just has but less in a way that makeup. makes him look ill in this scene. No, but I love it. I love it. You know, when I put on, um, because the way I put on my makeup is like kind of like a, I'm trying to do a mask look, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I laughing at that? It's not funny. <laughs> it's kind of stupid. It's kind of goofy when I do it. But like, when I think when you're trying to do it like a mask look, the way I do it is like I put it in that part of my face, so it looks like. I'm kind of, like, flushed or whatever, but, like, naturally. Like, the way you would do if you're running a lot. I think uh-huh. they were trying to do that with him this episode. They're, they yeah. they watched the exact same YouTube video tutorial on how to do masculinizing makeup <laughs> that I did. And they did it to Giant Padalecki. So true. Yeah. Or maybe Sam did it. He was like, before I go to Dean Winchester... <laughs> Before I follow my brother, who is potentially going to say yes to Michael, I'm going to stand in front of this motel room mirror and do my makeup. And he's so real for that. So true. Dean is surprised that Sam is here. But Sam goes, you're going to kill yourself, right? It's not too hard to figure out the stops on the farewell tour. How's Lisa doing anyways? So Why? First off, yeah, I don't... I guess he saw her in Dean's mind in mind. Dream a little dream of me. But the thing is, you know, if I if like one of my sisters I got into their dreams and it's just some random woman in there, I'd be like, okay, like I won't think about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. you dream about this woman. It won't be like, wow, she has always been. Your, this has always been your dream to your be with love. Lisa. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Sam Winchester, that's because you have, like, a full life and you can think about other things. But Sam Winchester doesn't even have a podcast. <laughs> yeah. The true, yeah. like, in the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The one is, <laughs> the high, that's self-actualization. And Sam Winchester couldn't even have it. Exactly. Um. So he stopped by and... I don't. I still don't know why. 
how that would help if Dean left. Is this like a motel very near where Lisa lives? Probably. Or yeah. it's like Actually, I don't know because you can do this from anywhere. You can do what Dean is doing right now from the side of the road, like honestly. So like yeah. why this motel room specifically? Yeah, I mean, I guess the Impala is a pretty distinct, distinct vehicle. Thing, yeah. Maybe he did his, like, slow walk inside in, like, multiple <laughs> rooms now. <laughs> and all the other rooms were like, who the fuck are you? And he's like, Sally, I thought you were my brother. And so, yeah, yeah this is his fifth try. Mm-hmm. And Dan says, I'm not going to kill myself. And Sam goes like... No, so Michael's not about to make you his muppet. Um, and he starts getting angry at Dean for just walking out, as he puts it. Yeah. Um, and Dean's just like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna do it, yep. And Sam goes, how could you do that? And then Dean says the most ridiculous (laughs) sentence ever. He goes... Yeah. How could I? All you've ever done is run away. <laughs> You're right. Going to college is the same thing as this. I don't yeah. get it. I don't get also, it. Also, do we need to interface with this scene as like a suicide attempt the way um Supernatural is doing so? Um Yeah. Maybe by interface you mean laugh less or just discuss yeah. it. <laughs> like maybe we should bring that up or like I don't know. I mean, well, let's bring it up when Bobby quite equally um, equates them I mean, to each other. Sam I guess. quite equally does it by saying the words "kill yourself." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said "kill yourself" specifically. No context around it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Anyway. This is the framing. Like, that is the framing of this scene. And yeah. this is suicide at them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think the note is very clear. Yeah, of course. And the lingering shot on the gun before Dean puts it in the box, I think you're supposed to go, yeah. is he gonna do it? Yeah. You yeah. know, I did think to myself, why don't they just kill themselves? <laughs> no, literally. Literally, literally, like... Why? Like, it, like season five, like, to, like, Sam and Dean's perspective is, like, this is a whole season about how, like, you can't escape fate and, like, no matter what, we're gonna have to say yes to Lucifer and Michael. But, like, it is also a season where, like, in two different episodes, like, in Song Remains the Same and Dark Side of the Moon, like, an alternative is presented very clearly, which is that if you're dead, you can't do it. I mean, the thing is, the like they that's why they went to heaven pretty much to be like, no, they can't die because you see in heaven, Zechariah is still gonna chase them, and blah blah blah. I think just go to hell, honestly. <laughs> yeah, literally just go to hell, make a demon like, deal, really and be go like, to hell you have it last like two days. Thank you. Fine keys. Well, that's Thank it. Keys. Yeah. Can you, do you think you can do that? Like, can you be like, ah, fuck, I've killed a guy. I'm already going to hell anyway. Why don't I get a demon, um, demon degree? What's the fucking thing? Demon deal. deal. Yeah. I think I was confusing deal and agreement. And I was like, that's Mm. kind of like a degree. It's a degree. Well, (laughs) uh, can you get a demon deal that's like, okay, but like, it'll be chill. Like, the deal is like, I'll live my life the way it is, but when I go to hell, you won't torture me as much. I feel like you. Is it, no. or is it like you're already going to hell and that's all they need? And they kind of need to torture her. Or yeah, do they just they? want your soul. Like they don't. I don't think there's anything else that. If you're already yeah. gone, you can't make the deal, I think. Well, it could also be you can make the deal. So they're like, ah, oh, this person was going to go to heaven, but now they're going to go to hell. And then you start you know being like now i'm free from all inhibitions i could just kill a guy (laughs) true (laughs) yeah much to think about much to think about yeah dean says that saying yes to michael is the exact same thing as going to college love that and then okay all you've ever done like this happened like what 
three times max? Like, when Sam was a little baby kid <laughs> and he wanted to play with a dog and eat pizza. When Sam went to college. Child. And then when Sam quit hunting for a little bit. So true. Whatever. I guess this is this is what the episode is saying. And Sam goes, and I was wrong every single time I did. He was literally not. Like, I don't know who's telling you this, Sam, but you were literally not. <laughs> like, I, just, I don't get it. I'm so confused. I don't get it. But whatever. Whatever. This is what he believes right now. Sam tries to claim that Bobby's working on something, but, you know... There's nothing really going on there. And Sam tells Dean, you know I have to stop you. And Dean, I think just reaching for something hurtful goes like, you can try, but just remember you're not all hopped up on demon blood this time. Yeah. Um, and Sam's like, yeah, but Cass is here! Yeah. <laughs> And he is, and he knocks Dean out. Cass looks so beautiful this episode. Love Cass. It is kind of astounding. Like, the thing with Cass is, like, I think in this episode specifically, I think I've realized why I love him so much. And it's Mm -hmm. because something corny tired or played out will be happening on screen, and I can just completely zone out and just look at him. (laughs) Yeah. I think this may be the case. Oh my god, he looks so good this episode. Yeah. 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 And he had to shave his chest as a father. Was he a father, father of two, two at this point? I think he was a father of zero, perhaps. Shave, yeah. Well, this father of zero had to shave his chest yeah. at some point. Wonderful. Wonderful, Wonderful. experience. And he, like, takes off his tie. Oh, lovely. Also, regarding the saying to Sam that, like, you know, as a way to hurt Sam, that Sam's going to drink demon blood again or something. Well, um, just that he can't stop him because he's not strong enough without the demon blood, yeah. Yeah. I I, I think one of the more distinct um, ways that Dean's actions have been discussed in this episode is like how every single person he interacts with he like specifically like sam dean and bobby oh no. yeah how sam cass and bobby to, it's the you're not my dad it's the demon yeah. blood thing for sam but for cass it's like oh you want to fuck me you want to <laughs> fuck me yeah which i think <laughs> is true and i find it incredibly amusing that this is how he goes about it yeah and like with sam it's kind of straightforward um with bobby it's also straightforward it's also just kind of stupid also the the thing bobby pulls is incredibly (laughs) funny (laughs) bobby literally said you're suicidal well i'm about to kill myself (laughs) (laughs) and he's so real I don't know if we should be laughing less, but literally, I was like, this is a typical, like, when you're, like, a late teenager, and all of you and your group of friends are so miserable, this is, like, a typical conversation you have. (laughs) It's so funny. (laughs) And with Cass, you know, like, it is a taunt about, like, what 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 you already sacrificed. Because I like I think Dean does understand that like Cass did all of this because of some fondness for Dean or some trust to him or something. And the way that all the characters react to it is also so wonderful. Like, you know, like like the way all the characters react to it is Dean goes, Bobby, you're not my dad. And then mm-hmm. Bobby goes, No, I have treated you like a son. So like you don't get to say that to me. Mm-hmm. And the way um, Sam reacts to it is, it doesn't matter to me if you think that way because I still trust you. Yeah. Uh, Which are like similar ideas, but they're also like 
they have such distinct differences that I think make them both interesting on their own, right? And mm-hmm. with Cass, it's like, okay, fine. Fuck you then. Yeah. <laughs> Which I also love. And like, yeah, I think it's... This is what I'm saying. Like, the episode does something. Yeah. Like, and like, it does it so clearly, so distinctly, and so well. I'm like impressed. Oh my mm-hmm. god. Jeremy Carver, maybe he had it in him this whole time. Maybe he did. Uh, now they're in Bobby's place. And Dune is just like complaining and being like, oh, what the fuck are we doing here? Also, like, this did remind me of that one post that was like, why the fuck do we say screwing pooches? Like, that's so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> and it is stupid as fuck. And Dean says it this uh, scene. Yeah. And yeah, he's just complaining and he's like obviously doing it to piss everyone off. Um, mm. And Bobby goes, Dean, you're not helping. And Dean goes, yeah, well, why don't you let me get out of your hair then? Is that a dig at Bobby being bald? <laughs> I don't because think Bobby, so. Bobby, <laughs> Bobby seems so fella. He's like, what happened to you? Is that like? Well, is that- I mean, I think he's just offended because the because of what Dean's saying regarding like, you know, like let me go say yes to Michael. But you know what? Dean did make a bald joke two episodes ago. Maybe this is who he is now. Yeah. Also, I mean, we've never seen Bobby's hairline. I feel like, except for when he was dying or something, right? Yes. Like, we've seen his hairline once, so it must be a point of insecurity. We also saw when he was being an FBI agent in that suit um, yeah. in the the 301. Yeah. Bit difficult to mm-hmm. hide it if you're not wearing a cap. Mm-hmm. Should have worn a top hat. <laughs> you should. Dean's still complaining. A Bobby reiterates their point, which is that We've got to save as many people as possible. And if we let the apocalypse happen, that's not going to be the case. But Dean's like, well, whatever, man. Like, you can say that. But if it all goes down and it all goes to shit anyway, even worse than what it would have been if I didn't say yes to Michael, that's going to be on me. And Bobby goes, you can't give up, son. Son. (laughs) Corny as hell. (laughs) <laughs> is that mean uh yeah maybe and goes, <laughs> yeah it is because you're like, not my father <laughs> you're not my what? father <laughs> and you're not in my shoes bobby opens his drawer and he pulls a gun out pretty deliberately sets it on the table and he takes Puts a, a bullet, bullet out of yeah. his pocket Single not out one. of the desk yeah both sam and dean look pretty shocked um, and Bobby explains that, like, this is the bullet that every morning, like, I think about using to kill myself. Um, but I don't do it. I never do it. You know why? Yeah. And then he shouts, I don't want to do the shouting, because I promised you I wouldn't give up. Um, which, I think I'm glad to see a callback to Curious Case like that, because yeah. I feel like... In some ways, it was like, oh, like, we just set the Bobby mental health thing to rest after yeah. that. I mean, we revisited it slightly when Karen came back. Yeah. But, like, yeah, when Bobby said, like, no, I'm not going to be okay. Like, it's good to see that there's a follow-through to that. Yeah. And, like, you know, the way Dean talked about it the last time they did was, like, Let's never talk about this ever again. Or yeah, like, I don't want to like, hear about this ever about again. This. Yeah. And like, yeah, the point Bobby making here, Bobby is making here is that I kept that promise, which I think is like, you know, pretty good way to call back to that kind of dialogue. Yes. Uh, yeah, I love that. Pretty good. I, I mean, mm. I, I laughed about it earlier. Not like laughed about it, but you know what I mean. I did laugh about it. <laughs> yes you did <laughs> no but I mean like I genuinely like this scene and like yeah mm. I like what it's trying to tell that like you say I can't ask things out of you 
but you asked things out of me and I did it. And it's not an actual rebuttal to that you're not my father. Because, like, he can't rebut that. Like, that's a fact. Like, he is not Dean's father. This is more of a, like, we're on each other's side and we are family. Which I like. I like that it isn't, like, who's the who's the one who's there when your dad was a Debbie dad? And, like, it's removed from the concept of, like, being a father to Dean. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, like, you asked me and I did it for you. So why don't you give me the same respect? Why don't you give me the same... Why don't you reciprocate this thing that I did for you? Which I appreciate. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And it was established in the Karen episode that, like, Bobby's... Like, one of the reasons that Sam isn't saying yes. So, like... Yeah. They didn't really bring up Dean in that episode. Right? What are you talking about? In... Oh, shit. I forgot the name of the episode. But he says, Death did this to me because... Like, I'm one of the people keeping you from saying yes to Lucifer, but he's talking to Sam only. Yeah. But yeah, I guess it's it's been established that Sam and Dean are the people keeping each other from saying yes. And then Bobby's a bonus for Sam, but he is also a bonus for Dean. As soon as Bobby finished this, this part, Cass goes into heat part two or something. Uh... <laughs> He's like, something's happening. He's hunched over. He's in pain. And then um, he just disappears. And I love the effect that they do, which is that they throw paper around the roof every time Cass appears or disappears. Love it. There is this, honestly, beautiful scene. And like, the, the some yeah. shots of it are a bit wonky. The ones that are very obviously like CGI. Um, hmm. But otherwise, I think it's it's quite nice. And it's quite a quite nice different um look for the episode, which is yeah, pretty yeah. much a lot of it is just set in Phil. the in Bobby's place. Uh, but now they're like in a is this a woods? This you I don't think it's yeah. woods really necessarily, but it's like just a large green space, and it has become flattened, just like you know in four hundred one. But now, like, in a different way. There's so many trees falling over. There is a thing on the ground that Cass... It's like, what the fuck is that? And Cass goes for it and tries to touch it. But then he gets attacked. A wonderful fight scene ensues. Every time Cass has a fight scene, it's so wonderful. <laughs> Yeah. And, like, I feel like um, either Misha Collins got better at the fight scenes than versus, like, like in, shooting in season four. Or they got better at shooting it. Like, they got better at shooting around him or something. But, but like, the choreography itself is also really good. Uh, mm. Like, this is the iconic blade uh, flip. You know yes. the one. Everyone knows the one. Yes. The twirly and, twirl. Yeah. The angel blade twirl. And... Uh yeah, and like there's just this like really fun bit where, like he ha- does he have two angel blades at this scene? No, I think he nabs one from the first ah. person that he kills. Yeah, so he's like fighting one of the angels, and then somebody goes up to him from behind, and then he uses that angel's angel blade to shoot the angel in front. It's, I'm yes. not particularly sure, but like. It's it's pretty cool. And yeah, he this is also the one where he like brings a guy down and we see like a bottom up shot of gas like stabbing a dude. Mm, yeah. Which is also iconic. Honestly, love gas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I only say You've that never when I've said I'm this before. Do you yeah. wanna do you wanna pause and discuss this? You you love yeah. Cass? Yeah. Every other time I've said it, I was dishonest, but now I am saying it honestly. <laughs> Love. Real. And it's just it's so fun to see him fight. And I don't know what the logic behind it is. I have given it some thought because like, you know, I don't really see I don't really feel like that kind of joy seeing 
anyone else fight in the show. You know what I mean? Like, mm. it's just a casting. Maybe I just love it's him differently. His trench coat swishes. It's like, if true. he was just in a regular suit and doing this shit, I would be yawning. Yeah. It's the it's the airflow, the movement even. Also, like, later yeah. on, right? Like, Dean calls Cass nerdy. Uh, and that scene did, like, send me on, like, a thought process of, like, wow, like, Dean is really hung up on this, like, idea of Cass as nerdy or dorky or something. Yeah. And I do wonder, because, like, I, I had the thought, like, if Dean, if this was, like, any other person, and that person was, like, nerdy or dorky, Nordy or dorky, <laughs> dorky or nerdy, as Dean puts it, would he be? Would he act like as endeared about it, or as like kind of funny about it? Because like when he when he yeah. says it about Cass, it's always like a haha, but like in a kind of like a look at this guy kind of way, and not particularly negative specifically. And mm-hmm. I think what it is is with Cass, there's the benefit of the doubt that like, oh, he's like that because he's an angel and he's like not exposed to the world. So it's okay if he's kind of weird. But if you're a person who grew up in the world and you're weird, kill yourself or something. I feel like that's Dean Winchester's perspective. Do you understand what I'm I saying? Gr- yeah, no, I yeah. do know what you mean. And then I applied that thought to me, thinking that Cass's fight scenes are better than everyone else's. And I'm like, do I only think this? Because I think he's, like, dorky. So, like, when he fights, it's, like, super fun versus when everyone else does it. Do you think I think that way? I don't think I do, but, like, what if? I I cannot tell you what goes on in the recesses of your own mind, Gray. Well, you've tried before. (laughs) This is true. <laughs> to try a bit harder now. What is it? The fact that he's skinnier. R- really? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think is it? Cass is skinny. But I don't. Do you, I think do you view early seasons Cass as like scrawny like, or whatever? I don't know, like buff in the yes, yeah, scrawny or something. Yeah. Well, you know what? It may be a part of it that his clothes are just bigger. <laughs> so he looks smaller yeah. in them. Yeah. He is unlike a lot of the other characters we see. I think fundamentally that is what it is. Like, there is a novelty to it just because he's different and he stands out. I mean, yeah. like, people have talked to Helen back about supernatural and masculinity. But I really, like, I love Gas. <laughs> Yes. And I have no idea how to word it other than, like, that. Like, I love him. You connect the dots. Yeah. You can probably connect the dots. Like, me saying people have talked yeah. a lot about masculinity and supernatural, but I love Cass. Yeah. Love him. Yeah. Where's the post that's, like, like, Dean will tell Cass that if he sees a mouse, he has to eat it, and Cass will do, like, the scrunchy face and go, Dean, why? And Dean will go, ha ha, buddy, you're so crazy, you're so crazy. You know that post? Yeah, I love that post. Let's reblog it. I do, Yeah, also, and will yeah. eat three mice in a row just to prove a point. <laughs> yeah. Remember when the, the scrunchy face, like, emoticons were just like a thing that we did all the time because of Cass yeah is it the one where it's like the more than sign and like, then the the flat yeah greater than thing. Uh, yeah. and then like a period or like a underscore and then a yeah. less than sign yeah that is the that is the Cass experience it's the Cass girl experience it's feeling that way yeah I love him <laughs> anyway after the fight scene, he goes back to his um, to the weird thing on the ground, and it's like like the 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 the, the dirt is giving, uh, and there's a there's a hand that rises up, and Cass pulls the hand up, and the hand is in fact the hand of 
Adam Milligan. He's back. So true. He was never here. <laughs> this is true. His spirit is back. Like, as in, no, yeah. that's not also not. Well, his name's back. His idea is yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. The idea the guy of Adam looks Milligan. like him is back. Yeah. Both times. The yeah. actor is back, even. Yeah. Yeah. Jake Abel is back. It's so funny. This is like the last season we see him until season 15. <laughs> Huh. And then he's gonna have yeah. a fucking a- archangel boyfriend. Good for him, honestly. Good for him, honestly. Yeah. Honestly, that's like one so. of the more interesting things Supernatural does in the show. I would say, like Michael and Adam. Yeah. And I do think they do it rather well. Ten rows wishes, or I guess nine rows is when. She was 19 and he was hundreds of years old. Oh my god. And that's so funny. I thought you were talking about Rose from Titanic. And I was like, what the fuck oh. would Jack and Rose do all of that? <laughs> yeah. At no situation should be, should they be doing all of that. Yeah. yeah. Adam died when he was 19, right? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah. And then oh, he spent... Slay. How many... Wait, Sam spent like... 600 years in the cage, right? Like, that's the... That was 200. He spent 200 years in the cage? I think he spent Yeah, but it was, like, hundreds of years. Yeah. And it was only, like, a month or some shit, like, in the (laughs) present day, right? No, exactly. Like, Dean is, like, entering Lisa's house, and Sam's already there. (laughs) Like, it was, like, a week, maybe. (laughs) Hilarious. And it's 600 years or yeah. something. So, yeah. So, so Adam was in there for, like... So, like, maybe Adam was also, like, a millennial years old at that point. <laughs> Probably more, it's honestly. True. Maybe he is, he is... He was in the cage it's longer like than Zachariah has been employed. So true. So, we're back to Bobby's, um, and we're seeing what Dean under surveillance is like, because Sam's, like standing in the way crossing his arms and Dean has to ask him to move to get a beer from the fridge um and Cass appears more paper blowing in the air and yeah it's it's Adam that's him he's there because we don't see his face until like this moment when yeah he lays him down. and also like he's dirty like he has like literally yes. a lot of dirt on him which is a fun look uh yeah. it is. How did he how did he like not decompose? Well, I mean oh, how did no. Dean not decompose? No, but like how did he um lift himself out of his grave? Uh Yeah, I mean the dirt probably wasn't packed in that tight. This is true. Or maybe like Zechari gave him a boost. More than Cass yeah. ever did for Dean, honestly. Real. Cass says the angels rose him and they need to hide him now. So yeah. he does the ribs Angel symbols. ribs thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sam and Dean are no longer special. This is true. And Adam wakes up and he's like, what the fuck Gasping is going for air. on? Yeah. Yeah. And he goes, you're going to find this a little, a lot crazy, but we're actually your brothers. <laughs> So and corny. Yeah, yeah, and Sam goes, it's the truth. John Winchester <laughs> was our father, too. <laughs> Literally, he says, John was my dad, too. So true. <laughs> yeah, but Adam knows who they are because the angels already talked to him about this, specifically Zachariah. He drops that his heaven... Was that he was making out with this girl on prom night. Dean makes like a random comment about, did you get to third base? Yeah. And also in in the middle of this, he gets out of place right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He took a shower. Adam did. Yeah. Anyway, like, that line is so up because it's like for a moment, literally just this moment in the episode, Supernatural was like, no, we need to go back to our roots, man. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, like, it like feels damn, so maybe suicidal, but like, don't worry, he is also a sleaze forever and ever. Yeah, he's still in there. So Angel's told Adam that he was chosen to save the world. And he says kind of cockily, like, oh, me and some archangel are going to kill the devil. And he says that he's Michael's sword or vessel or something. And everyone in the room is looking at each other like, what the fuck, man? Also, I love Adam's accent. He's from Minnesota, right? It's pretty fine. I love it. I think so. Huh. I never noticed anything about his accent. Yeah. But But that's because you never pay attention, Crystal. It's true. (laughs) That's it's not so mean. I'm so sorry. It was supposed to be a joke. And you will always the thing you will often say things and I'll be like, haha, that's so funny and move on. And then like later you'll be like, I'm sorry for saying that. That was mean. And I'll be like, oh, like Gray meant it like with vitriol in his heart. No. Like now I'm No, offended. what I think is that you're never laughing. Like I'll say something as a joke and you'll be like, huh. And I'll be like, oh no, Crystal <laughs> thinks that I actually Things I that see. They don't pay attention. Yeah. Well, do you? <laughs> <laughs> do I? I don't know. It's a good question. I think his accent is. Um, he has some words with some twangs in them that I cannot, for the love of God, describe. But it's fine. Uh, does Jake Abel have a different accent when he talks normally? If not, we can just see where he's from. Okay, I mean, He's I've from never heard him talk, is the thing. Is his name, like, Jacob Abel, then? That's kind of funny. Like, that's kind of real. Good for him. It's pretty good, Bible yeah. verse-wise, yeah. Oh, ew, he's on a walker. Ugh, come on, man. He also played Edward Cullen in the Midnight Sun audiobook. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Good for him. Is- Maybe not, but yeah. Is it bad? Anyway. What? Right. What do you mean, maybe not? Oh, like, that's I bad. Mean, Twilight's racist is all I meant, I uh, suppose. Yeah. He was in Walker for eight episodes. That's a lot, that's of, a lot episodes. of episodes. Jared Badalecki, you need to quit it. And he did. Happy cancellation to Walker. Hell yeah. Dean goes like, well, that's insane. And Cass goes, well, actually, maybe they're moving on from you. Like, Love that. You know. Love the phrasing of it. Yeah. They're moving on from you, Dean. Because ah. Adam works because he's part of John's bloodline. And he's also Sam's brother. And Cass goes, oh, I think they did this because they're desperate. Maybe they wrongly assumed Dean would be brave enough to withstand them. <laughs> And God. he's so kind. He's, he's like, bitch this episode. he has it's his great. arms crossed over his chest. Yes. And he's like, he's he's looking down from his chin. You know what I mean? Like, he's lifting his yes. chin up a bit to look at to side eye Dean. Love it. And then, you know, the line everyone knows Dean goes, All right, you know what? Blow me, Cass. Love and it. Is that homophobic? Kind of is. Kind I. I don't kind think of? I'm not sure if I, mean, like, I feel like he would say it to someone of any gender. <laughs> <laughs> like you think he'd tell a girl like, "Okay, blow me." I don't think he would because he'd understand the sexual implication of it. But like towards a man, it's like, like demasculinizing, whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, um, like. The way someone would be like, oh, you, I'm going to make you... Well, that's also a bad thing to say to a woman. Uh, <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> I mean, you know what yeah, I mean? I th- like, Yeah. I, it just feels like a variation on bite me. Yeah, but it's blow me specifically. He could have said bite me. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I guess for me, I just assume that it went more sexual to show... He's more angry, like how fuck is worse than like a different swear word, but like yeah. I think it could have homophobic implications. 
I mean, l- later on when he tells Cass, like, oh, the last time someone looked at me like that, yeah, I got no, laid. That's, that's yeah, that's something. But for that's sure. a part of the plot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like, he's like actively taunting Cass at that point. Uh, I think it it is a homophobic intention, but I don't think it's supposed to count in our count later. You know what I mean. Hmm. Sam is the one who goes like, I don't believe that this is a real thing. And he ends up being right, which is a very rare Sam W, where he just says that, you know, after everything about like destiny and all that shit, like, I don't think the angels would have a plan B. That doesn't seem right. Um, yeah. And Adam, who I really like, <laughs> goes like, Okay. This has been a really moving family reunion, but um, I've got a thing, so... It's so funny, too, because, like, right before he says that, like, Sam's lines, he was acting a lot more, like, you know, like, aggrieved than he usually does. Like, he's louder, mm. and he's like, what? Like, he's more dramatic about his, like, um talking. And so yeah. when Adam says it, like, it's just, it's even more funny. Because, like, Sam isn't even like this all the time. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, Sam, like, Adam already is standing up. And then Sam's like, no, 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 sit down. And, like, you know what? If I was Adam, I would have also sat down. <laughs> because, like, <laughs> these, these guys are terrifying. Plus, they have, like, an all-powerful angel in the back. So, like, maybe I will just sit. Sam starts going into bad acting era. <laughs> so true. <laughs> or at least Jared Padalecki starts going into bad acting era. Really delighted by how he delivers. The angels are lying to you. They're full of crap. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. In the transcript, they, like, they italicize lying. <laughs> like, they also were like, yeah. Jared's really acting this time. <laughs> He's talking in italics and everything. Adam is like, uh, no, they're fine because they're angels. Hello. Hello. (laughs) Love this guy. And Sam brings up that the fight would kill half the planet. And Adam goes like, well, they said the fight might get pretty hairy, but it is the devil, right? Like, just very straightforward, simplistic answers to everything. Yeah. Like, and just very tired of Sam and Dean's shit. Um, cause yeah, Sam's like, there's another way, and Adam's like, great, what is it? <laughs> and, and I don't, it's, it's a really fun dynamic in the room because both Adam and Dean are like being very antagonistic towards like the Sam and Bobby duo who aren't even working together. Bobby's not talking, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, like, yeah, like, Dean piles on with, like, um, we're working on the power of love. And he's like, mm, that's not going good. Like, it's just, it's very fun. Yeah. The, the levels of, yeah. like, being an asshole that are happening here. This is so true. And Adam tells Sam to give him one good reason that he should listen. <laughs> because we Lord. Poisoned. Absolutely poisoned from the supernatural well. Literally. Goes, because we're blood. <laughs> and Adam says, you've got no right to say that to me, which is like, real correct. Yeah. And Bobby pipes up for the first time in five <laughs> minutes and goes, you're still John's boy. And Adam goes like, no, like, John was some guy who took me to a baseball game (laughs) once a year. I don't have a dad. Slaycation. Yeah. And he says that the only person who's his family is his mom. And the angels promised that he could see her again. Well, maybe if you really loved your mom, you would be soulmates and you would see each other in your heavens. Have you thought about that, Adam? (laughs) Like, think about it. It's 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 what? also so like wild to me that like John showed up once a year, and like there was always a baseball game on. No, no, no! He like, was like tracking a certain team's games. 
I'm pretty sure there's Louis Vuitton everywhere. Maybe. Maybe that's not true. I don't think that's actually true. I don't know how U.S. sports works. I don't think that, like, if there's a, if there's, if it's just, like, the stadium closest to Adam's house, I don't think there's, like, always a game on every day. Yeah. I mean, he probably comes around the same. I mean, didn't, didn't, like, Ghoul Adam say, like, um, it he, birthday it was his birthday did. specifically. So maybe his birthday was, yeah. like, a, Particularly baseball y season week. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how sports work. Yeah, I know how the NBA works, but that's it. Yes. And Sam says that if Adam has just one good memory of dad, yeah. um, then he'll give them a little more time. And apparently he does. He's very nice for this. I just left. I do think the conversation Adam and Sam has later is, like, incredibly interesting. About, like, you know, what you want in life based on what you weren't able to have. Uh, there, there's this one moment where Adam is, like, eating a sandwich and he's just watching Bobby. And, like, they're kind of, like, facing each other directly. Like, they placed Adam on that seat so that Bobby can watch over him type of beat. Love that. Uh, but Bobby turns around to check on some stuff on the shelves. And Adam's like, oh, this is my opportunity. So he tries to go out the door. But Sam literally just shows up. He just shows up. And Adam's like, wow, I'm going out for a beer. And Sam's like, yeah, hell yeah. We've got a beer at home. As they go drinking, Adam says, look, man, I'm not up for it. <laughs> Like, I'm up for this bonding shit. Uh, and also, are you keeping me here on lockdown? And Sam says, well, you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, and he said that John was trying to protect Adam from all of this. Uh, and Adam says, yeah, well, I guess the monster that ate me didn't get that memo. Love it. Slay. Love it. And yeah, Adam says that he remembers that. Oh, also, I completely forgot to mention earlier. Adam, like, remembers heaven. He remembers yeah. heaven. He, no, he knew he was dead. He knew he was in heaven. Isn't that wild? Yeah. I mean, we we know in a way because like um Ash and Pamela, right? Like they also knew. But I thought that was like yeah. a they were in the know somehow. And that's why they knew. Well, I don't think Adam knew until after the angels came. I think he him. I think he did cuz he he talked about it like he was like yeah, I was in heaven, but somehow it looked like my prom. He talked about it like he, in well, the he moment was told he knew that he was in heaven later. You think so? You think that's what happened? Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, Sam says, "Well, you know, Adam, trust me. This is so Funny incredibly fuck. condescending. Quite insensitive thing to say, but he goes." The one thing worse than seeing dad once a year was seeing him all year. And he does that. Like, he does that voice. He does that emphasis. What an I mean, asshole. I thought he was being really funny. What but an you and asshole. Adam disagree. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was incredibly funny. But, like, you know, wow, this guy's terrible. He just completely misread the room. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean... This was not this was not the move, but <laughs> but it's hilarious it how wrong it was. <laughs> and Adam immediately says, "Like, yeah, no. Do you know how full of crap you are?" And he says that their situation was it was him and his mom who worked the night sh- the graveyard shift in the hospital. So he cooked his own dinners. He put himself to bed, and. He says, you can say whatever you want about our dad, but the truth is, I would have taken anything. 
Sam and, and Dean also cooked their own dinners and put themselves to bed. Yeah. Like, what I find Sam should have said, I also really only saw John, like, twice a year. Yeah, but he already established that, like, the worst thing is seeing him all year. So, like... <laughs> and it's not even true. He didn't even do that. No, but, like... Yeah, you barely saw that guy. I think the point that is... The emphasis here is not even really because, like, yeah, Salmon did did that. Salmon Dean did that, but like, they also had each other. They cooked dinner for themselves, but it's the two of them. And then they put yeah. themselves in bed, but like, it's the two of them. And I think that is a more distinct comparison than like the parenting situation because as you said the parenting situation is practically the same yeah like at least adam had his mom in fact (laughs) yeah they should show up in the morning at least (laughs) yeah like every day both of them had one parent each and his was better (laughs) (laughs) yeah that was the retribution no, but like, I don't know, I found that interesting that they already talked about John earlier, how like Adam was dissatisfied with the situation with John. And I think another way Sam could have connected with Adam here is like, yeah, but the thing was dad wasn't there for us too. Um, But I had other family, like I had my brother and he was there for me and he was there with me. And now that we're brothers, we can't be there for you. <laughs> he that does kind of try to go that route right after this. I mean, yeah. He should have gone with it first try. It would have worked better if it wasn't so obviously like a second option. I, I like. I find the comparison extremely interesting. And mm. I think it does emphasize like what the point is of Sam and Dean's relationship. Like, the foundation of it, which is that when they were kids, they had a terrible dad, and they had to live with it, and they did that with each other. And I, you know, that's, like, that's the touching, like, that's the part of the story of Sam and Dean that, like, originally got to me, and it still gets to me, yeah? Anyway, as you said, Sam immediately goes, but you're our brother. And he goes... Well, if we had known that we had a brother, and Adam's like, no, you didn't, so... And Sam goes, we would have found you. And Adam's like, okay, well, you didn't. (laughs) I love that. Sam says, I can't change the past. I wish it could, but from here on out... And Adam just immediately shuts it down. And Sam just goes... Oh my god, you're just like us for real. You're a fucking hater. Good for you. <laughs> I I like this scene. I actually I really like this episode. Sam is finally putting Dean in the panic room. Thank you for yes. payback. So Yeah. And they, they do make it very clear that he, I they call back to four twenty one quite a few times this episode and I appreciate that. But yeah. So like Cass is standing in the hallway outside, just like glaring at him. And then Dean goes again, famous line. Yeah. Well Cass, not for nothing, but the last person who looked at me like that, I got laid. I guess just glares harder and yeah. Dean like throws. He smolders. Away. Yeah. <laughs> Do we discuss this? What's going what on is there? Here? To I mean, discuss- we already discussed it. Well, like what, okay. What, okay, writing wise, like Destiel painting. Why is it? Why is it happening so hard and so raw this episode? Are they Destiel baiting or are they just going where the story is taking them? <laughs> I think they're just going where the story is. <laughs> but I do think I, they are. Explain this. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I can't explain it. It's just vibes. I feel like. I, mean, I think the way it that it gets ramped to. up is, like, kind of surprising. You think so? Mm. 
Yeah, I think I, think I see. A lot your point. of it happens this episode. Like too much Ooh. of it happens this episode. I think what it is is that, like in this episode, they try to hammer down the relationships, like Dean and Bobby, Dean and Sam, Dean and Cass, into their fundamentals. And this is the, the like fundamental for Dean and Cass. Not this line specifically, but this specific dynamic. For this line specifically, I don't know. Actually, maybe you're right. Maybe this is queer rating in all the ways that we know it. And some that we don't. It, what, what do you think? I don't I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, I, I think like everything I said, it is a weird conclusion to get to. <laughs> yeah. Because it, like, I, okay. Let's like think the of- most hurtful things that I can say to Cass to like put him off and make him like angry at me and leave me alone is flirt like, with you want to fuck me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Instead of thinking this true logically, let's do it the other way. What are the <laughs> other options prior to this episode that you think they could have gone through or gone with? Um, you're weak, you don't have your powers, you're useless to us. Yeah. I think another I think option... That's the obvious one. Yeah. Because, like, the idea that I have, which is the basis of this also, they could have just taken it just slightly differently, is that mm. um, you believed in the God so much, and mm. now that didn't pan out, so you're trying to believe in me, but guess what? I also am going to disappoint you. Um, mm-hmm. And that kind of is the vibe. But like, the flirting is not necessary for that. Uh, I don't know. I guess there is a certain kind of taunt towards an angel. Where it's like, you threw away everything you believe in for something as base as lust. Like there, there's something uh-huh. to that, but it's not the vibe. Also, <laughs> so what yeah. is the vibe? What are they doing? I don't know. What's going on inside Dean Winchester's head? Is I think, like, because the writers, like, did they just think it's funny if Dean was suddenly like, yeah, you're gay as hell <laughs> or whatever they're thinking? <laughs> I, I mean, it is. I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I, I, okay, I can understand. Jeremy Carver. What has Jeremy Carver said? I thought you were going to say, Destiel what is Jeremy Carver's sexuality? <laughs> I don't know what he okay. has said about Destiel, but you have to remember he was the showrunner. 4 4 11, 4 8, 15, 8 9, not 10, really getting 11. Four twenty, very brief. Five oh three. <laughs> What's five? Oh- there, Ooh. there it is. Maybe you free really, to meet you and me is he literally this was guy. By Luis. No, yeah, he he, and he, he was did Bert think that and he Ernie. wanted to fuck that guy. He was a Bert and fucking Ernie. I think yes. he was just like they have something going. Maybe he was he was a the personal DL space guy from the very beginning. I think he was like a this guy's kind of gay parentheses homophobic guy from the very beginning. Yeah, and but, then like yeah, by season nine he was like this guy's kind. This guy's kind of gay. Parenthesis. This is good financially. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Yeah, he's, no. he's like you know that he's that one. The thing, you know yeah. that one post what? that's like, how do how do kids online always know what slur to call you? And then someone <laughs> was like, they're empaths. <laughs> this is like what Jeremy Carver is going through in this episode. Real, yeah, real. And also what Dean Winchester is going through. Real. Release the cut where instead of saying maggots, Zachariah says a different word. I believe it. I know it's out there. <laughs> well, okay. Anyway, so that line gets delivered. 
Cass looks really hot this episode. I might mention that. <laughs> I just remembered the smolder. Yeah. Anyway, Sam sends Cass off. Well, no, okay. It's all. <laughs> Sam goes like, uh, why don't you uh, go keep an eye on Adam to Cass? And like, it feels almost like he's like, like trying to spare Cass's feelings. Like he's sending him off as like damage control partly because he feels bad for Cass. Like, do you get this vibe? I don't understand why Cass is here. His only job was to open the door. And, like, I don't no, understand. for real. Like, what was he doing here? <laughs> like, like maybe Sam was, like, <laughs> while they're going down, he's like, I don't know why Cass is following me. I'll just tell him to go back up when we get there. <laughs> and then <laughs> Dean drops this line and he's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, Cass is down here because he wants to fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, later yeah. on, I do find this... I mean, somebody else pointed it out, but, like, the trap for Cass was just for Cass. It was not going to work if anyone else checked up on Dean. Yeah. So, like, Dean was aware that Cass is going to be hanging around there listening to him. Yeah. <laughs> kind of real <laughs> Desiel is kind of real but it's also the thing is like I know Desiel is real I've made my arguments I've made my points whatever <laughs> if it's happening on yeah. my screen I'm still like am I crazy <laughs> am I crazy <sighs> that's what years yeah. years of queer baiting will do to you I guess <laughs> yeah yeah they're like in love Anyway, so... I don't think they're in love yet, Cass, but later on, Cass they will be. is obsessed with this guy, and Dean's aware of it. Yeah. Which is very interesting to me. Yeah. Because I Where feel do you like think, when do you think go Dean like that Dean's so it. repressed that he doesn't know. I think he knows. I th- I've, I've made my case, right? I think he knows. Yeah, no, yeah. I think he knows. I think um like, by season already. six... Nothing in season six about Dean and Cass makes sense unless Dean knows, is my take. Like, all of the everything that happens there hinges on Dean thinking, Cass wouldn't do this because Cass loves me. Which is kind of wild to me. And that's why the betrayal in that season feels more acute to him. Because it feels like, you know... He just, it, it must have felt like he just fundamentally misunderstood what Cass's deal was. Oh, oh. God. We're gonna do a Man Who Would Be King episode. One day. And it's going to be, it's newer than you think. It's newer than you think. We've been You'd doing think... season five for like forever, though. Yeah, but that's like. because we're terrible at this. <laughs> We didn't even take a break. Yeah, but I keep on taking like one week, two week break because I'm doing fuck all or whatever. And by fuck all, I mean I am actually doing things with my life, you guys. Yeah, like school and things, yeah. Yeah, mostly lying down though, if I'm being honest. <laughs> That's also a something. Yeah. It's yeah, not. It's something. Yeah, but it is. It is. But yeah, anyway. But first, we're gonna have to do Hammer of the Gods. So, like, maybe we should just quit. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, the thing is, like, I don't know. Like, because the thing is, we talked about Desiel a lot already. But Mm -hmm. I think Desiel this season is nowhere near as distinct or, like, important to the plot or, like, just interesting as it would be later on. And I am incredibly curious how we're going to interface with it. Because, like, mm. that shit... R- I mean, it has taken you before, and it has taken you before, so... Mm. I think it... Y- n- I-, I think it's just interesting. I'm just interested in how it would pan out in the kind of conversations we have in a podcast, you know? When is Chuck gonna come back? Do you remember Sam Chuck? Wasn't Sam Chuck such a wonderful time? 
Oh, it's never going. Sam Chuck specifically is never gonna be back. I'm so sorry. Aww. Yeah, no, like, Chuck's literally gonna have the god reveal in four episodes. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Whatever. Yeah, so Sam sends Cass off in a way that really feels like he's trying to spare Cass's feelings. Yeah. Um, which I think is so fascinating also. But yeah, basically, since Adam's a flight risk, they need to put Dean down here so they don't have to watch both of them. (laughs) And Dean goes, I'm not letting him do it. And Sam goes like, who, Adam? (laughs) Literally, yeah. (laughs) Like Adam too is in this episode. (laughs) He completely forgot about that kid. Like, literally immediately forgot. (laughs) Yeah, and he goes like, I'm not either. And he's like, no, 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 like, you don't understand. And Sam's like, oh, no, I get you, but I'm not letting you do it either. And the whole, Dean's doing his whole guilt thing where he's like, we got so many people killed, so, like, I have to do this so he doesn't. Um, Adam wants to do this so he can see his mommy again, so, like, I think it's fine, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> yeah, okay. Dean lists the people that they got killed, and he says that Mary is a person <laughs> that they got killed, <laughs> which I think is hilarious. She made that demon deal, like, herself. I guess he's like, we couldn't save her when we went back in time. Yeah. But like, I mean, I, I don't think that's it at all. I think it's just, like, fundamentally, it's our fault when it is it, like, at all. Yeah, we should have killed ourselves in the womb. Yeah. That's literally yeah. what they said in the book. <laughs> <laughs> that is what they said a few episodes ago. Yeah. Yeah. He also, he mentions Jess to hurt Sam's feelings, and we see him flinch on that one. Yeah. Um, He mentions Joe and Ellen. He doesn't mention Ash and Pamela, even though he literally literally saw saw those two. Like two episodes ago. Dean goes, I'm tired, man. I'm tired of fighting who I'm supposed to be. Wow, this is me. Bisexual. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah. (laughs) So, anyway. um, Sam goes, well, do you think maybe you could take half a second and stop trying to sacrifice yourself for a change? Maybe we could actually stick together? And Dean goes, I don't think so. I really like a lot of the acting choices this episode where, like, Dean just refuses to really engage in certain things, but, like, just in a very, like, giving up way. I don't know. I like the way this was delivered. Yeah. And Sam goes, why not? Dean, seriously. Tell me, I I want to know. And I also liked how that line was delivered. Like, he is being, just, like, he's like, I'm, like, deliberately putting down the anger. Like, can we just talk? Yeah. Like, it's nice. And then Dean says I don't some believe. words. Yeah. I don't believe. And Sam goes, in what? And Dean goes, in you. And... I wish that they'd worked up to this a bit more. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. Or rather, okay, because what the thing is next is, okay, I don't get, know whether it's gonna be, yeah, no, go first. Okay, the thing is, like, with the Bobby thing, we know that Dean is saying that to hurt Bobby. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, it's coming from yeah, a place of... He's like a father to us. Yeah. Re- just then. Yeah. yeah. And, like, towards Cass, like, it's more believable that Dean would be pissed at Cass, but, like, it's also, like, we understand yeah, like he that he's pissed specifically quest. because of this. Like, he's pissed specifically because of what's happening right now. So, it's also understood that it's not personal. This one is like, mm. Dean could have just said this. He could have just said this. And I'll be like, yeah. Even if he's not lashing out, I'll be like, yeah, that's his fundamental belief. You know what I mean? So, like, it does feel at odds with the other ones that wait, feel oh, quite I, situational. I, I, wait, do you think he doesn't mean this? 
I think that is like the juxtaposition that is set between this yeah. scene and the others that it's very right. easily Uncle believable that like he the... just means it. I think he does. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, like, that was good. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the only scene that you would solemnly believe it to be true versus the other yeah. ones. Well, yeah. I think it's because it's prefaced with Sam being like, can no. you be honest with be me? Be honest who it is. Me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly like that. But, okay, what Dean says is, I don't know whether it's going to be demon blood or, or some, some other, other demon, demon chick, chick or what, but I What's do the know what? they're going to find a like- way to turn you. I don't know if it's demon blood, some demon chick, other demon-related paraphernalia. No, he's like, like demon a demon chick rubber chicken. Or other genders of demon. <laughs> <laughs> I, the thing is... If Dean's gonna be pissed at Sam and not trust him, I'd say after 516, it should be about what he saw in 516. Like, I think that the demon blood callback feels a little late. Like, you may say that you want us to work together and all that, but, like, how can I believe that, like, I know that's not what you are fundamentally. Yeah. Yeah, That you're not a team player. Yeah, like, in your fundamental nature, you want us to be a part. So, yeah, like, you want to be your way. Why would I believe that, like, us sticking together will make us stronger, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, I can see that, but, like, I feel like Sam's proven time and time again that, like, the demon blood thing is, like, like he's good. Like, Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And, like, I don't think Dean has expressed too much. Like, okay, I guess... I guess the last time we interfaced with this was in My Bloody Valentine, where yeah. Dean is, like, pissed at Sam about the situation. So, like, sure. And, like, it's not like what Dean's saying has to be rational. It just has to be what he believes. Yeah. But I just I just feel like it hasn't been shown to me that this is Dean's deepest belief that's leading him to do these things. Because the episodes leading up to him making this choice to say yes to Michael have not been related to demon blood in any way. I think what would have been... Because you can use this exact words. Just remove the demon blood and other demon yeah. chick. Like, you can you can <laughs> say, I don't know what it's, what it's gonna be. And you you can like you can list things that are outside of the demon um brand. Yeah, maybe and Lucifer like, will let you get into Stanford again. Yeah, maybe you pass in Yale Law School or something. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Lucifer will even invite you to Thanksgiving dinner with his father God. <laughs> I feel like no one can turn that down though. Like Sam would definitely not turn that one down. That's unfair. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna be a weekend that you can eat funyuns and have a dog or Yeah, Sam, what if you hit a dog with your car and then you bring it to the vet and like and the, the vet like tells you to keep it? It's like a hot woman. <laughs> But yeah, literally, like, just take out the... I don't know whether it's gonna be demon blood or some other demon shit. What a funny fucking sentence. <laughs> I think also if you just said, I don't know it's if it's gonna be demon blood or what, like, I'll be like, okay. Yeah. Because it's like... Yeah, but when you're establishing the demon... like <laughs> The demon brand? Like, it's a brand name demon? Like, okay... Yeah. What if they give you a pack of Funyuns, an Sam? Chick, Dean? Have you thought about that? They want Sam yeah. to say yes, too. Yeah, what if they give Sam a pack of Funyuns and Dr. Piv or something? <laughs> and then that's it. Exactly. I mean, it's it's a good scene other than that, I suppose. Yeah. I do find the Lex line interesting. Uh, so yeah. yeah, Sam goes, so you're saying I'm not strong enough? To which Dean replies, you're angry, you're self-righteous, Lucifer's gonna wear it to prom, man, it's just a matter of time. And it got me thinking, if the situation was reversed, 
and Sam was Michael's vessel, would Sam have said yes? I think he would have. Like, the way Dean is painting huh. the situation, I think that's what we're supposed to think. Huh. Do you understand what I'm asking? Yeah. Because, like, I think, like, the main detractor for Sam is that it's Lucifer. Like, imagine the Lucifer scene where Jess is, like, Lucifer. Imagine that scene. But it's revealed that Jess is Michael. And then Mm. Michael is asking Sam, we need to fight the devil. And I need to possess you to do that. Sam would have 100% said yes. Yeah, I think especially at that point yeah. in the season when he's still so racked with guilt, like he'd be like, hell yeah, purify me, baby, let's go. Yeah. I just, I don't think this argument works because it's Lucifer we're talking about. Literally any other argument it would work, though. Mm. So, yeah. I think Dean hits on something here. Um, It's just the yeah. the the, like... The line previous is like, <laughs> girl. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I enjoy that you're saying I'm not strong enough thing because the demon blood stuff being brought up is hitting on Sam's old insecurities about that yeah. again. Yeah. You're angry, you're self righteous. Has, has Sam been doing that recently? Like, he was angry during 99 Problems, but I think for... Because Dean was literally right gonna reasons, say yes, and then he did. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. I don't know. Yeah, so he says that. And Sam says to Dean Winchester, who was ranked number one on a consumer survey of people who would say that to <laughs> Sam, Don't say that to me. Not you, of all people. Yeah. Truly, like, it's it's that's such a thing Dean Winchester would say though, Sam. Yeah. Like, I I'm mean, surprised it, you're surprised. <laughs> it did remind me of like in Sam's hallucination, um, in the yeah. Demon Blood Detox episode, where that's this is something he tells Dean too. Don't say that to me. Don't you say that to me. Yeah. And it's like. I don't know. It does touch me, I suppose. The idea that, like, Sam just thinks there are lines that, like, Dean as his brother should not cross. Um, Even though Dean has crossed that line in the past, it's the verbalizing that, like, makes it real. I don't know. I mean, Sam was gonna be a lawyer. Sam must believe in the power of the word. (laughs) Yeah. This is true. That is an incredibly funny thing to say, especially because it I'm is. also gonna, I'm also gonna go to law school. Yeah. Shout out if you well, believe in the, you power, believe of in the, the power of the word. Power of the word. I think so. Yeah. Congratulations. But yeah, I don't know. It's the yeah. I think it's the verbalizing. It's like the oh, like you've really, really, really given up. Yeah. Yeah, Sam doesn't really have an emotional support network. Cass likes Dean better and everything. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, he's, like, he's that's... God, nobody... T- yeah. I think it's interesting that you say that, like, saying it is, like, the sign and semblance of giving up. Because, like, you're right. That is the point of this one. Like, even if Dean thought it, as long as he didn't say it, then it's not that it's not true that he thinks it. It's that yeah. It's that he's gonna he's, keep trying. To he's make gonna that keep trying, true. or he's not putting up that concrete line of like it's done. Yeah. As long as he doesn't say it, but if he says it, it's you're like you're right that I think that don't say that to me, is more of a don't say that period, because then it's mm. done. Like then it's out there, and you're really going to say yes for real for real. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. And he goes, I don't want to, but it's the truth. If you didn't want to, you wouldn't have said it. But. What a liar. Yeah. And he says, like, you know, since you're going to say yes, 
like Lucifer is gonna like start destroying the earth and somebody has to be there to fight him and it's not gonna be that kid so it's gotta be me also a line that made me emo because I know how this season ends yeah that is that kid <laughs> I mean, it is that kid, but, they can decide but it is that they also don't Dean. give a fuck about Adam right after. No, like the point of the point I'm making is that this season ends with Dean telling Sam, "Like, I'm here. It's okay. I'm here." Like when Sam is fully possessed and controlled by Lucifer, and that's what like saves mm. the world. And I've already emoted mm. about this before, <laughs> but like, yeah. it does like. You know, it does get to me that, like, here, it feels like a threat somehow, right? Like, mm. somebody's going to be, have to, has to be there to stop you because you would do a, a terrible decision. And yeah. at the end of it, it was like, no, someone has to be there for you because you would need someone. And that's, that's a, it's really touching in retrospect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whatever. Can you believe I actually feel things about Supernatural? It's so embarrassing. It's been so long. It's been so long, baby. You were fireproof. And we still are. Yeah. Oh, wait. Okay. Adam was dead. Though. Yeah. Like, he was dead. Like, they're not really factoring this into their decisions. Like, he kind of was dead. Like, are we really losing that much <laughs> if he dies again? Like, you already got this like, kid killed It's like before. a handful of episodes ago. Like, people were being raised from the dead. And, like, they were like, we're gonna fucking kill Bobby's wife. <laughs> like... No people should be raised from the dead. It's over. Like, but like also, now you're like, no, Adam needs to continue to live a long life. Like, well, he was also raised from the dead. Like, what's the difference? You know, earlier, like when when they're like, oh, we're going to get killed. We are going to get Adam killed. Who else have we got kid and killed? And I'm like, well, Adam, <laughs> you've already gotten him killed, I think. So I don't know, man. I feel like you can just get him killed again. Like, that's just one like person. Like Bobby said, like, like Karen said, you already killed me once when I was possessed by a demon. Bobby, you can kill me again. Literally. Like, if we're going, if we're killing, if we're counting it by kills, yeah, that's twice. But if we're counting it by person, you're down one, baby. So it's fine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You can, you know, beat the statistic up until it shows you the result you want or something. And in this case, yeah. that's the result. Sam goes up. And it's just like an establishing scene. Tell us that Bob Bobby and Sam are upstairs having a bro moment. And mm. Cass is like, literally, literally just like checking up on Dean. Like literally just going downstairs, like listening yeah, in like a bit. Yeah, the crash hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Like, he's just going down there because he's, like, in love with that guy or something. I think he is. <laughs> Incredibly <laughs> funny. But, yeah, he's, like, hanging around. And he's actually, I think, about I mean, to okay, go he upstairs. also has a lot riding on Dean not saying yes because he gave up so much for it. And he also doesn't want the apocalypse to happen. No, here's, just, here's but... the thing I would say. Let's say first what happens. Which is that Cass is, like, about to leave or something. And then suddenly he hears a really loud crash inside the panic room. So he goes over there and he's calling out to Dean. And he opens, like, the little... um thing what's that like the slat the window yeah thing. the yeah. the window thing and he looks around but of course there's blind spots and he starts getting worried because dean is not responding so he opens the door and he looks around and yeah dean just goes cast and then he sigils cast away and like okay a couple things about this one um Bobby, like, okay, one, Dean specifically formulates this trap for Cass. This is only for Cass, because obviously the banishing sigil would only work for Cass. Number two, yes. it specifically requires Cass to come in, uh, which yes. Sam and Bobby would not have done. 
Which, like, I, again, I don't know which aspect Dean is playing with. Is it, like, Cass's naivete? Or is it, like, Cass likes me enough that he'll actually be concerned enough to come in? And, I don't know. Like, uh, I find it interesting. He knows that Bobby can't make it down the stairs <laughs> anymore. True. Yeah. And he was just really awful to Sam, so I think he sort of assumes that if anyone's going to come down, it's going to be Cass yeah. right now. Yeah, but, like, yeah, I don't know. Like, why do you think he so, thinks Cass would definitely come in? Right, the coming into the room part? Because, like... Um, we know in other situations, like, Dean has left Sam in there when he well, really shouldn't they, have. Didn't they go, they went inside and tied him down when he was, like, being flung about the room in 421. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's like a, so, because Cass can't see him, he's like, oh, no. Yeah. He's probably... Yeah. Gone or dead. Just to check if, like, yeah, the angels magicked him away or something. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think it's a bit less crazy than we made it out to be earlier. I think it makes sense. I think it but... makes sense. It's just also fascinating that this is, like, um, Dean's... I think what's crazy is the fact that Cass was already checking on him before the crash. I think that's yeah. the part. Where I go, oh, like, he's in love with this guy. Yeah, because it also could have been just that I heard a weird noise. I'm going downstairs. Maybe that was Dean's yes. initial intention. It was like, yeah, someone will so. hear a noise. And it just happened to be Cass who was already there trying to overhear stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Well. Anyway. Well. Um. <laughs> We establish that, like, Sam leaves Adam to Bobby. Uh, we see that Adam is, like, in a dream. And he's sitting down, and he's at a playground. And then Zechariah is sitting next to him. And Zechariah says, like, yeah, your mom's not coming. This is, like, the playground that she left you in once, right? Uh, anyway, she's oh, not going to be here. Leave she will him there. She took him there. <laughs> <laughs> Different meaning, yeah. <laughs> and it's fun. I like I like this playground scene just because don't don't Cass and Dean have a playground scene in four oh seven? Yeah, on a bench. That's yeah, because that scene is about how like look at all these people. Um, people this is what the, we're the going to be and saving. Innocence of children and yeah. humanity. Yeah. I mean, I thought honestly, I thought that like. His mom did leave him. Because when Sakurai goes, your mom's not coming. I was like, wow, this is like a traumatic experience for him. Like, <laughs> his mom left him at the park. <laughs> the point here is that they're withholding Adam's mom from him. So that he will say, he will do their bidding. Yeah, Sakurai is saying like, you're with Sam and Dean, I know. Um, we told you about them. So you must know that. And then he goes... You know, they're psychotically, irrationally, erotically codependent on each other. <sighs> I've seen this phrase in too many titles of a blog that I I've blocked. No. <laughs> like, you, you're you like, you know, you're like, what the fuck is this post? And then you go to the blog and it's, uh, that's literally. It's like, it's oh, like these, the words erotically codependent are in the title. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I understand what's going on here. Yeah. It's a it's a phrase that um the Winchesties has really clung on to. Um Yeah, I mean I understand why it's because Zachariah looked directly into the camera and said Wincest is real. Yeah. What an interesting writing choice. <laughs> what is going on in Jeremy Carver's mind? Like, yeah, he was like, all homophobia is the same homophobia, whether or not there's incest involved. Like, not my business. <laughs> yeah. I do find what Zechariah says to Adam about, like, what will happen to him will be, which is that 
when like when when things start going down they're not gonna give a shit about you and that they're going to save each other and they're going to save the world but they're not going to save you because they don't give a fuck well they said that they don't that they would save each he says that they would save each other and not save the world and not save him oh is it like i thought it was like they're going to save each other then save the world which I always no, it's Van. How? I thought that was quite weird because I was like, well, if they're saving the world. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> like, Adam's kind of part of the world, don't you think? So, yeah. yeah. I'm literally, this is like the first time it has been revealed to me that what is said there is Dan. Is it really? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. My life has changed completely. As much as it did when I when you found out I was left-handed. I can't believe that's true. I can actually. But yeah, Zachariah's argument is just like, don't trust Sam and Dean because they don't want they don't, you. Yeah, they don't give a shit about Which you. I think it's so fascinating. Like these angels and these Winchesters are like crazy. Like none of them are like. In touch like, with the human no psyche. Argument about like saving people, about like what logically makes sense, like whatever, whatever. No, it's just like do what who Trust do whatever. Me. Like the person who loves you the most says. Yeah, and like like d- don't you care about like saving the world and killing Lucifer or whatever the fuck? And like yeah, I mean that's the interesting part really because like the thing that convinces adam is none of those things like what convinces him to say yes the very first time was that um you know like we need to defeat lucifer which i think is like completely reasonable ask yes um and then with sam and dean it's like no please give us time to figure something else out because the collateral damage is gonna be brutal and, like, he didn't even yeah. say yes to that. He was just stuck there. <laughs> he was just on yeah. lockdown. And, like... Yeah, and, I mean, he only agreed to hear them out because he had one good memory of John. Yeah. And, like, I mean, later on, like, when he goes... And also, I think we're supposed to think that the whole, like, oh, we're gonna, like, take down Lucifer, blah, 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 is meant to be sort of masking the fact that what he mostly wants is to see his mom again. Oh. I thought you were saying, like, masking is in, like... It's trying to play up to his, like, masculine <laughs> pride no. or whatever. <laughs> no. <laughs> I meant I'm asking with a K. I think there's a, like a, a an aspect of that too, though. Like the way he talks about, like, oh, I'm going to mm. be like Michael's, like yeah, this I'm archangel, so cool. and I. I'm gonna be an action yeah. hero. I don't think it's no, particularly I just like see my mommy. Like I don't think it's particularly masculine mm. pride, but like, like there is a sense of like pride there, of like I'm going to be useful or they need me, and like mm-hmm. I do think it is interesting. What happens when Zechariah reveals everything? Because that's the thing that is most distinct. That, um, you know, like the the the, the things it's that like I'm not actually chosen. I'm not thing. actually that I'm not actually going to do something useful, and also that not only is that true, you're also using me to hurt these people. And it's like he doesn't love Sam and Dean, but like there is like a fundamental aversion to lying, I suppose. <laughs> and I don't know, I think it's interesting, honestly. Mm. But yeah, like what convinces him at the end is like, I'm gonna see my mom and I'm going to kill Lucifer in this situation. Like it's not like yeah. we love you. Well, I think the fact that they come back for him. Like, he does seem quite touched by that. Yeah. Anyway, Adam wakes the fuck up, and that's it. He's gone. Yeah. All right. So, Dean, like, has headed out to where there's a street preacher who's saying that, like, 
the apocalypse is happening, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, no, you're right. It's fun. This is a callback to when, like, what episode was it? Like, when, like, you know, like, all the, like, like, angels have been contacting, like, certain, like, more niche Christian sects in order to, like, have them keep out, keep a lookout for Sam and Dean. Was that said in 501? I think Jehovah's Witness was, like, 503. That's why, or, like, the end in 504, that's how Zechariah okay. gets to him. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah. So Dean it's a nice approaches callback. this guy, and he goes like, "I'm Dean Winchester. Do you know who I am?" Um, and then he tells the guy to just pray to the angels, and clue them in where Dean is. Ugh. And he, the preacher guy, so he starts praying like, like I don't know. I just is this really the prayer that yes. you would do for? For this specific situation? Um, it's just a basic prayer. Like, if you're like, pray, I would be like, our father mm. or to heaven. <laughs> like, and that is like the, yeah, just at the, the automatic. Of all of them? Okay, so like the beginning of all prayers starts with that? No, the beginning of all prayers starts with in the name of the father <laughs> and of the son. But this guy's not Catholic, so. Like, well, what are you, what are you saying? What are you asking? I don't know. It just felt like a very generic thing to say. I was like, uh, did they not do research? Is there not like a more fun thing to start with? You know, um, there's there's a guardian angel prayer, but that's not really what's happening here. Love that one. It's like yeah. something that you teach children. It's specifically a prayer for children. It goes, that's Angel nice. of God, my guardian dear, to whom his love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to, at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. It's so cute. It's like, you know, yeah. when you're a kid, that's what you pray. Very cute. Anyway, you should have prayed that. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. But anyway, so he starts with the, our Father who art in heaven. And then Cash shows up and he goes, you pray too loud. Love and then that. he knocks the guy out. Cass, you're so hot. Hi. It's this scene. And then he does something even hotter. <laughs> okay, before we get into it, I just want to say, because we're, I'm sure we're going to talk positively about this scene. Um, it's bad. Like, it's bad that he did that and Dean's very suicidal. <laughs> but yeah, what? <laughs> no, but like, I was just going to say, like, I was it last episode we were like, wow, Sam and Cass are like, in love and then the entire thing is Cass being like Sam you're so horrible and you're like the fucking devil or whatever the fuck yeah. <laughs> anyway um yeah so just to clarify to put it out there me and Crystal 100% support toxic relationships <laughs> so that's the situation it's good that he did this <laughs> I take back what I said <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, no, it it is a very, it's an interesting scene because Cass, like at the end of it, Cass knocks Dean out and then he brings he him back to him. Bobby's yeah. house. And like, yeah, and like he could have just done that. Like none of this serves a purpose except that he's angry yeah. and he wants to beat Dean up. Yeah. And like, and the thing is yeah. like, you know, it'll be, it can be like also like he got taken on by the emotion but he's not regretful at all yes. like that's not the point because he keeps Dean beaten up so like mm -hmm. not only not only is he punishing Dean he thinks Dean deserves it so yeah, yeah. that's the dynamic of this scene it's insane though <laughs> It is. Yeah, and that's part of why. Yeah, and I feel like Cass doesn't do things that are, like, wholly selfish very often. Yeah. Like, I feel like he's always been, you know, working towards, like, the larger goal, etc., etc. Yeah. But, like, here, like, he really, really loses it. He's just, he's angry for himself. Like, the scene yes. is he's angry for himself. 
it's all I. Yeah. I rebelled for this. Yeah. There's I no gave like you lofty everything. ideals about like yeah. saving the world or whatever. Yeah. It's just like I can't fucking believe this shit, Dean Winchester. Yeah. Because of me. <laughs> no, it's. I think it's also fascinating that all the arguments round back to that, like with Bobby, it's like I didn't mm-hmm. kill myself because you told me not to, and that's not yeah. about the fucking apocalypse. With Sam, it's like yeah. you don't get to tell that to me, and the the mm-hmm. thing that is the thing yeah because i need you to keep me from saying no and all that yeah and like the thing is specifically that like he thinks sam is like terrible like you don't get to say that to Mm. me and with Cass, it's like you don't get to do this to me which i I think i think it's it's fun it's fascinating yeah no i like it i like it yeah. yeah, I feel like the only place that this suffers is with Adam because they keep trying to bring him into their like way of thinking about things, and the show sort of acts like he's gotten into that way of thinking about things too. And it's like, well, I don't, I don't think. Yeah, no. I, I th- don't know about that. I mean, I think it's a fascinating choice to not have Adam and Dean interact mostly, mm. so that it doesn't mess up with Dean's thing. Um. Yeah. So. Like, because the Dean thing becomes kind of the thesis of the episode, um, Adam's thing is solidly B-plot. And I like that they didn't in- try to incorporate it somehow. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I think makes it stronger. Both the Adam thing and the Dean thing. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what actually happens in this scene is... God, it's so... I don't know if I can talk about it. Do you want to... Do you want to take... Okay. I'm not... You know, this whole scene, I was kind of spacing out while watching it. And yet I can... Okay. Like, watching it this time. And yet I can so clearly visualize it in my head. Like, I can see it happening mm-hmm. right now in my mind's eye. Uh, but anyway, mm-hmm. uh, Cass, like, pushes Dean up against the wall, like, really gets close to him, and he goes, I rebelled for this! Uh, and then he punches him <laughs> two times, right? And it's, like, an interesting cut I've, that I they do. Counted, but yeah. An interesting cut that they do. So it's, like, because mm-hmm. the way he punches him, it's, like, he punches the side of the wall, actually, uh, but like Dean's face like turns obviously it's like choreography but they mm-hmm. do it twice like they cut in between it in a jump cut which I think like the way they do the jump cuts this scene is also really fun like it adds to the energy of the scene that suddenly it's like so fast Uh, yeah and then so you could surrender to them and then uh, he he like tosses Dean on the other side and he goes, and Cass, uh, Dean is going like, Cass, please. Uh, it's just like the only thing he says, like, when Cass is beating him up. And mm-hmm. yeah, Cass goes, I gave everything for you, and this is what you give to me. <laughs> and then he tosses Dean into the, like, wire link fence. And Cass is just looking down at Dean. With his furious face and his fist is clenched up. And Dean looks up to him and his face is bloody. Like, as in, like, like blood is spilling out of his mouth. And he has, like, a thing mm-hmm. by the side of his eye. And he goes, do it. Just do it. And we see a close-up of Cass's hand. And he unclenches it. And then he goes to touch Dean's shoulder. And Dean, like, squints away. Like, he really thinks yeah, Cass is gonna punches. kill him now. Mm. Which, like, I don't know. Obviously, the closest thing we have of this in the future is um, Season 8, Episode 17, Goodbye Stranger. And, mm. like, um, that was the moment where I was like, oh my god, yeah, it is, like, I think Goodbye Stranger is the most fascinating scene to compare it to. 
Well, the thing that reminded me of it was like the flinching away from the hand, the like squinting your eye, just preparing for that. Which Dean yeah. also dies in Goodbye Stranger. Like he really does think yeah, Cass, Cass is gonna kill him there. Uh, yeah. You know what's so funny? I showed that um, AMV to a friend who promptly got super obsessed with it. Never seen Supernatural before. Mm. And yeah. they went like, oh, I didn't know that there was like violence in this show. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, you're right. When they hunt monsters, they put them in like a little cage. Yeah, it's and just they vibes. go bye-bye now and then they go off on the back of a I truck. <laughs> they like I think this friend literally thinks supernatural is Scooby Doo. <laughs> like <laughs> what the fuck? Anyway uh yeah i don't know i think it's interesting to think of this in the context of that because of obviously how their relationship um evolves but i guess that's a conversation for 817 this time yeah. i don't know what the conversation is supposed to be i just i think yeah um we have definitely handled some conversations in the podcast not well in the past. <laughs> so, yeah. like, um, this one, I also don't know how to interface with it. Agreed. Yeah, I don't think I can discuss it seriously because when I was watching it, all I felt was unbridled lust. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think this conversation is for us. I mean, next episode, or maybe not next episode. I'm not actually sure no, what episode it is. I think next, next. Mm-hmm. Cass is going to call up and be like, wow, I'm still alive, and Dean, you're not that bad. <laughs> you're not the it's hollow like, shell of a man that I thought you were or something. A man I thought you were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, I don't know. I actually don't remember how this is gonna play t- into that. Like, Cass literally beat him up. <laughs> So, like, yeah. how is that going to connect later? I'm not sure. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just feel like, you know, we talked quite incessantly earlier about how Dean must know that Cass is into him in some way. Is this mm. Cass also, like, trying to situate himself as, like, I don't like you that much, just so you're aware <laughs> incredibly funny thing to do <laughs> by funny I mean awful if that was the case <laughs> but you oh, know what I mean right I I understand what you mean but I think that this is this, this beating him up in an alley is fully an act of passion so like I don't th- if that's ah. what he intended like it didn't work yeah no like but the act of passion I feel comes from a place of like trying to assert like power over obviously i mean he does beat him up like no no more vivid assertion of power than like i can literally kill you right now like i i like like yes it's like it's just like a Uh i think a lot of it is just like Cass is just so 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 mad but like I think the unconscious um, idea that he's trying to affect here is remember that I can do this to you. Yeah? If that was the case, so? why would his dialogue all be, my feelings are so hurt because of what you did, Dean? <laughs> <laughs> show himself as like powerful Jesus and disaffected <laughs> like I think he'd say different words I need him to stand up <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I mean I can sort I can see sort of what you mean in the like and this is what you give to me as like a yeah. Like, you owe me something and I will take it from you. Yeah. But, like... <laughs> I don't... I don't know, man. 
Maybe. Maybe. Like, uh, I've been holding back the whole time, <laughs> but, like, there you go. Yeah. I know. I'm not actually sure. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I feel like everything he says is, like, showing his belly, like, so much. Yeah. Like, you're right. It is, like, yeah. showing, like, vulnerability, I guess. Or, like, showing, oh. like, the ability to get hurt. Yeah. That it isn't yeah. just, like, some vague um, betrayal. It's, like, a personal one. So, back at Bobby's, like, Sam's like, holy fuck, what do you mean Adam's gone? But, yeah, he disappeared right in front of them. And then Cass d- appears right in front of them with Dean. And he says, like, because the angels took him. Which implies that he was, like, invisible for a second while they were talking. Like, he showed up and was invisible for a second. Or somehow he heard. I love that Bobby goes, like, don't speak to me like that. Oh, he can't pull out the gun again. (laughs) And he only would say this to Sam. He's like, you need to respect me as your work superior. As your co-worker. Sam goes, what the hell happened to him about Dean? And Cass goes, me. (sighs) Anyway. (laughs) Yeah, um, Cass theorizes that Adam tipped him off in a dream. And Sam's like, well, where would they have taken him? And we cut to the green room, which Dean also calls the beautiful room. So you're right, that wasn't just from So Says the Sword. (laughs) Um, And... Truly, I cannot believe this. It's the beer and the burgers again. Yeah. And Zachariah specifically points out, like, oh, I guess you and Dean, like, enjoy the same foods. And it's like, I understand that beers and burgers are popular amongst men in the USA. But, like, this just feels more like Supernatural's, like, what gets passed down genetically bullshit. You know (laughs) what I mean? Yeah. Like, Sam would have a salad in there. And that's from his mom. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, it was, like, from that time. Mary's mom was chopping bananas in, like, like, 403. Yeah. Like, that was, like, 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 that's why Sam genetically eats fruits and vegetables. I mean, I did just find it funny. That's, like, imagine a beautiful room (laughs) to an American. And it's like a <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a corny, tired, and played out joke, but it is still pretty funny. Burgers are pretty good. I love a burger. I've said this before. Yeah, I'll say it again. Though, like, even like raising cows is ruining the environment. Like, this is true. This is true. Yeah. So Adam's digging in. He's like, okay, great. It's, yeah, bring Michael down. I'm ready to get possessed. And Zachariah's like, um, actually, uh, sorry, <laughs> no, well, you're fired, um, you're not the chosen one, you're here for bait, um, and he goes, if it's any consolation, you happen to be the illegitimate half-brother of the guy we do care about, that's not bad, is You it? literally said you're Adam the Bastard. Good for him. Yeah. Good for him. Adam is upset about this, and he calls Zachariah a son of a bitch. And Zachariah goes, how do you think I feel? I'm the one who has to put up with that dumb look on your face. He's pretty funny. He is pretty funny here. And he starts explaining his plan completely unnecessarily, I think. It really (laughs) kills, like, the momentum of the scene. That, like, he exposits so much. Um, and then he says the tumblers finally click into place. So true. So true. Yeah. Um, and he says that Adam will still get to see his mom. But Adam, at this point, no longer trusts Zachariah. Zachariah goes like, you know what? I keep hearing this, and he does like the yapping, talking, like 
signal yeah. with his hand. And he goes, but what I want to be hearing is this. And he shuts his hand, and then Adam starts, like, vomiting like, blood. gagging and choking up blood. Love it. <laughs> Love it. What a guy. Dean wakes up. He's now actually handcuffed to, like, the bed in the panic room. And Sam's like, how are you, Dean? And Dean says, word to the wise, don't piss off the nerd angels. He asks how things are going. And Sam's like, um, yeah, Adam's gone. <laughs> the angels have him. He is in the room where they took you. Because Cass already checked it out. There's, like, so many people, so many angels. So it's a bit of a Hail Mary. And Dean asks, what are you going to do? And Sam says, well, for starters, I'm bringing you with. And then he starts uncuffing Dean and all that. And Sam says, there's too many of them, so I can't do it alone. You need to be there. Well, okay. We see how this plays out. And, like, I don't know if they... Like, his argument is, like, there's too many angels in there and we can't take them alone. It's a Cass metaphor. goes in and he Crystal. does all of it. Like, you two are standing outside. It's a metaphor. Or not, it's a metaphor. It's a symbol. He's not actually saying this. He's saying something else. Obviously. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, fine. Like, he's trying to send a message. Like, it's not at all about the fight at all. Okay. Sorry. Is it a bit condescending? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm gonna start saying shit like water finds its level. Like what? Water finds... I'm gonna start saying shit like water finds its level. Real. <laughs> what? It's a truly astounding thing. That I was like... <gasps> I was like shocked. My mouth is a game. It was more shocking than anything I read in the actual book. <laughs> like, they should have put that in there. Sam goes, um, yeah, like, Cash and Bobby thinks it's a good idea, but I'm not- uh, It's a bad idea, bad but I'm not idea. so sure. And Dean says, well, they're right that it's a bad idea, because it's a trap for me to say yes, or it's not a trap, and I'm going to say yes anyway, and I will, I will do it. And Sam goes, no, you won't, because when push comes to shove, you'll make the right call. And Dean says, like, points out... I appreciate this. Points out the fucking message, which is like, if tables were turned, I'd let you rot in here. I have let you rot in here before. Closest thing to an apology, except for when he does give an apology at the end. Yeah. And Sam says... Well, I guess I'm not that smart. And Dean says, why are you doing this? And Sam goes, because you're still my big brother. Man, I love this fucking scene. I mean, it's a pretty self-explanatory scene. Um, yeah. It's just so incredibly, I guess, like, t- like touching. Like, before Sam goes, like, you're still my big brother. Uh, like, my primary thought was, like, He's trying to tell Dean that, like, you're still my brother. (laughs) So when he said it, I was like, my (laughs) God. What a wonderful thing for Sam to do. Like, I mean, yeah, obviously he didn't need to bring Dean there. Because Cass took care of it. Cass is going to take care of it, whatever happens. Because he doesn't want Dean to be there. And he doesn't believe in Dean at all. But Mm -hmm. Sam wanted to send a message. And it was successful. Good for him. Okay, so they're outside an abandoned warehouse in Van Nuys, California, where the beautiful room is housed. God, I fucking hate when people do exposition lines that are like, tell me again why blah 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 Like, aren't we- like, can't we come up with something else? Like, aren't we, like, beyond this as a species? But yeah, Sam says, tell me again why you don't just grab Adam and Shazam the hell out of there. And Cass goes, because there are at least five angels in there. Like, Sam literally already said there's a bunch of, like, angels there, like, last scene. Like, we're fine. Cass takes off his tie. Lovely. And and he wraps it around his hand. What is that for? 
I think I don't. Is it still around his hand inside? Like I think he wrapped it around his belly. Am I so wrong? It's unreal. It's possible. It's possible that I'm wrong. No, it's possible that he. I mean, either way, like either thing that's possible, it makes the other thing also possible. He says, like that. You know, he's heading on in, and Dean goes, "Wait, you're gonna take on five angels? Isn't that suicide?" And Cass says, "Yeah, but maybe it is. But then I won't have to watch you fail." <laughs> God, literally, <laughs> maybe Kabi is real. <laughs> like the suicide like the suicide threatening brothers he says I'm sorry Dean I don't have the same faith in you that Sam does and he pulls out a box cutter Sam is like what the hell are you gonna do with that and we find out eventually cause he goes inside and honestly these angels are terrible at guarding there's like an angel that comes in he kills one and then there's four others, and they start approaching, and, like, one of them is a woman, which is appreciated, because, like, from what we've seen, like, the gender ratio in heaven is, like, completely fucked. Yeah, this <laughs> like, is true. We have Anna, like, the one woman who's dead at the beginning of Head of a Pen, and then, like, this one, and that's, like, it so far, right? And, like, otherwise, there's, like, 50 million random guys in suits, like, all the time. I don't know. It's probably a combination of Supernatural being, like, misogynistic, and then, like, who's available to do fight scenes as an extra, and the gender ratios of yeah. that. I think it's a... Well... It's that. It's also just, like, it's not part of their consideration. Like, they don't think about it. Because, like... Yeah. If you thought about it, and you made that intentional... <laughs> um... Yeah, like, Point. so many struggling yeah. actors out there who would, like, do anything to be on Supernatural. Like, you'd find the people. So he tells all the other angels, what are you waiting for? Come on. And they all, like, like close in around him. And then he tears his shirt open. Love and he's carved that. a sigil onto his chest. And then he presses his hand into it. And all of them, including him, get zapped away. Slay. They creep in and they get to the green room. It's Dean who, like, comes in first and sees Adam. And so he goes up to him and Adam's like, no, you shouldn't be here because it's a trap. And Dean's like, yeah, I know. Well, yeah, well, yeah, there's the whole exchange where Adam's like, oh my god, you came for me. And, and Dean's you like, you're family. family. Yeah. yeah. Zachariah immediately shows up. He's like, do you really think it would be that easy? And Sam, Dean and Dean goes, well, did you? And Sam gets thrown into the room. Uh, and he's yeah. like, dying already. So... Love yeah, that. Well, yeah, well, the point is that this was supposed to be a distraction so Sam could stab Zachariah in the back yeah. with the angel blade. But Dean gave the game away <laughs> by having his fun little line. He's always got to have a fun little line. <laughs> yeah, also Adam's still been, like, on the ground bleeding and stuff. Yeah, and it's time. they were, like, on opposite sides of the room. So... Like, when Dean is looking at the both of them, he looks on, like, on opposite sides of the room. Mm -hmm. Dean tries to negotiate for Adam. At some point, Zechariah goes, wow, like, I was so impatient. But see, it's all playing out like it should. As the boss man says, uh, you, me, your hemorrhaging brothers. And I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Zechariah is taunting Dean. Dean finally he like plays it a little bit like no please don't please don't and then he goes fine I'll do it the answer is yes Dean goes like at, like Zachariah like hesitates and Dean goes like do you hear me call Michael down now and Zachariah goes how do I know you're not lying which is I didn't isn't it like is it the point, like, you can trick the person into saying yes? 
Right. So I was like kind of confused by this a little bit because like mm-hmm. the moment Dean says yes, what I like what you would think would happen is Sakurai would just jump into the opportunity. But no, like he hesitates and I'm like, huh, why? Anyway, Zechariah calls Michael down. And there is this shot of like Sam looking at Dean and it's a close-up. And then a close-up of Dean. And he really does look like he's going to say yes. And then mm. Sam again. And then Dean. And then he's just looking. And then his face lightens up. And then he gives like a little smile. And then a wink. He and Dean goes... Okay, I have a few conditions. There's a few people who you have to guarantee you're safe before I say yes. And Zachary's like, okay, fine, whatever. And Dean goes, but most of all, Michael can't have me until he disintegrates you. So late. And he goes, yeah, he has to turn you into a piece of charcoal. And Zachary goes, you really think Michael is going to do that? And Dean says, who's more important to him now, you or me? Sakurai says, he starts, you know, he starts getting real mad. He goes, you're nothing but a maggot inside a worm's ass. Do you know who I am? After I deliver you to Michael. And Dean goes, expendable. And Zakaria goes, Michael's not going to kill me. And now he is near enough, Dean. Like, he's really crowding into Dean. And Dean goes, maybe Mm. not, but I am. And he stabs Zechariah, like, through the head. So it, like, goes up his shin. Michael is coming, and Zechariah is fucking dead, baby. And it is a fun shot, obviously. How did Dean get the blade? He had Cass gives it to them earlier. Two of them. But Cass well, gives two blades to them. Why does but Cass has a third because he kills an angel when he comes in as well. Also, oh, what you're saying is what are you saying? Okay, well, okay, no, no, no. You're right. You're right. Because Cass has his own, and then he killed two angels at the site of Adam's burial, yeah. so he had three total blades. Okay, fun. Yeah, I mean, we didn't even talk about the scene when Cass puts down the blade. Which is like, I do think that is like a really fun time to be doing all that. Like, obviously, they're like, you know, really close to being in danger now. But also, like, giving Sam and Dean this specifically at this moment, especially when Dean's being such a fucking asshole. It's like, well, yeah, brave move. Like he trusts Dean to not kill him yeah. in his quest to say yes to Michael. Anyway, um, yeah. The 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 Zechariah imprint is like he's like kind of like propped up sideways, right? Against the wall. Mm-hmm. So the the angel sha- the angel burn mark goes up the wall and then down to the floor yeah. on the other side. Very fun. So Goodbye, Zechariah. I won't miss you, but I was pretty glad you were here. Yeah. Anyway, Dean tries to get, you know, Adam and Sam out. And Sam leaves first. But then, like, I don't know. Adam gets left behind for some convoluted reason. Yeah. And then suddenly and he's inside. And the filling up with, like, light yeah. and, like, high-pitched noises. Because, like, Michael is coming for real. Adam, like, turns around and looks at the light. It's gone. And when Dean opens the door again, it's just an abandoned office. They're in the Impala after. And Dean tells Sam, like, probably Adam and Cass are not okay, but we'll get them. You guys do not get Adam. <laughs> they don't give a shit. Yeah. Um. And Sam goes, so. And he says that he could tell from Dean's expression that he was really going to say yes. So, what changed your mind? And Dean says, like, the damnedest thing. 
The world's ending, the walls are coming down on us, and I look over to you and all I can think about is, the stupid son of a bitch brought me here. I just didn't want to let you down. That was a nice line, I yeah. think. It, I think it brings home the whole, like, what we've been saying about how, how this episode is, like, supposed to be about the apocalypse, but it really is just about the people. everyone's personal yeah. relationships and how they rely on Dean for certain things. So yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. It's the first time in a while that I teared. I teared up at something in supernatural because, Aww. like, I'm just genuinely affected by it. And it's this one. Oh, and Sam goes like, "You didn't. You almost did, but you didn't." And Dean says, "I owe you an apology." Sam says, "You don't." Incorrect, Sam. Well, he does, um, Sam. So but yeah. So, Dean says that, I don't know if it's being a big brother or what, but to me, you've always been the snot-nosed kid that I've had to keep on the straight and narrow. I think we both know that's not you anymore. And this is all good content. And then he goes, if you're grown enough to, grown up enough to find faith in me, (laughs) like, okay, like, this is what did it? Sure, man. Like, you know, I never trusted you before. But now that I know that you love me, like, for realsies, like, I maybe you are smart. I don't think that's the... I, at least I, I didn't read it like that. I read it as, like, you know, like, what Sam did is not simply, like, put faith in me the way you would, like, an older figure that you're just trusting blindly. Like, the point here is Sam intentionally, willfully put faith in Dean, even though, like, the prob- that was, like, not the best idea or whatever. And that is removed from Dean as a figure in his life, but, like, just plain belief in Dean as a person like that's what the point is it's like grown up enough to have like this mature adult understanding of like what it means to be here and to trust each other you know what i mean like that's how i saw it and okay because like especially because the way dean puts it is like I always saw you as, like, our role. I was your big brother. And you're, like, a kid I needed to look after. So, like, I didn't trust you as a person. I, like, took care of you as a role. Versus, but now I see that you actually do see me as a person. So I will start treating you outside of our roles as well and see you as not my little brother Sam, but just yourself. And I respect that. I like that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I can learn to respect that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. If you're grown up enough to find faith in me, the least I can do is return the favor. And then he says, like, you know, screw destiny. I say we take the fight to them and do it our way. Thus returning to the same way every Supernatural <laughs> episode ended in we just the gotta earlier keep half on going. of season yeah. five. Yeah. We can't and give Sam up. Says, yeah. Sounds good. We have to stick together. Together, yeah. even. So that's that episode. That's that episode. So, as we've established, and we seem to totally point out to, we like this episode. Good one. Yeah. Pretty good one, honestly. Really good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, like, I don't know, because it's the same conclusion, right? Like, as you said, like, the ending is, like, literally every ending of the Supernatural episode in season five. But mm-hmm. because, like, there is, like, a change from, like, who they are at the beginning of the episode to now and who they have been yeah. throughout the season and now. So, it feels more rewarding, even if it's the same shit. Because it's like, mm. it, it means something different. And that's fun. That's wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Horse line, horse line. Hmm. 
I think the worst sign, I really don't like when demon, like, so you got to third base. <laughs> like, it feels so unnecessary. Yeah. And a lot, I mean, oh, most of the misogyny on the show is pretty unnecessary. But, like, that one specifically is, like, that's not even the vibe of anything. So, like, I don't know, man. Yeah. Oh, wait, I think Dean's saying all you've ever done is run away. It's really funny. Yeah. And for Sam to be like, yeah. yes, and I was wrong every time. Yeah. Like, seriously engaging in it instead of it being like Dean's lashing out and being dumb. Like, I think that was dumb. Yeah. I think the one there is like Sam's reply. It's like, my God. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, okay, my best line is... I would say Dean specifically asking, um, what are you doing to Sam? Like, what does this mean? Like, what are you trying to tell me? I, 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 and Sam replying like, in what well, scene? Um, in the scene where, uh, Sam is telling him that he's going to bring him to the thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, yeah, Sam goes, you're still my big brother. And it's like, yeah, pretty good. Love that one. Love that one. Wait, I have another worse line. What? I don't know whether it's gonna be demon blood or some other demon chick or what. I have another worse God. line for Bobby's sake. Yeah. Um, you want me to get out of your hair? <laughs> so true. So fucking true. What's your best line? Um. Huh. I mean, there's lines that I said that I liked, but they've suddenly fleed my mind. <laughs> I like when Sam asks the the thing where he asks Dean, like, like, why are you actually doing this? Like, I, I really want to know or whatever. Mm, like, I like yeah. the way it was delivered. Yeah. Like when when during the conversation where Sam goes, don't you say that to me? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, let's just drop the free dances, man. Like, for real, for real. Mm-hmm. Well, um, spread sheets? Spread those sheets. Yeah. Spread those sheets. Is the third base line enough to count as a misogyny point? I think so, yeah. Yeah. And also, they don't have any right. women in this episode, so, like, I think we can be more brutal, perhaps, with if they... Yeah, because it's like they really went out of their way to do that. <laughs> yeah. Racism. Yeah. Racism, no, no. Not that I can Don't recall. Take so. Homophobia. Homophobia. Here's the I'd say it counts. Yeah. How much? Interesting. You know, because the thing is, I feel like you can argue for a higher one, but the thing is, I feel like there is... I don't know. Maybe a two? Maybe a one. I would say those are two. Yeah, I think those are my, my thoughts as well. So a two or a I one? Like, I think that, like, yeah, text, like, outside of what happens in here, I think there was, like, queer baiting thoughts occurring in the minds of Jeremy Carver and Phil Secretia. No, but, perhaps. like... So I think, like... My question yeah. is, like, where this... When it really starts, you know, like, full-blown queer baiting, what the fuck are we going to do with the homophobia stat? Mm. Like, sincerely, what are we going to do? I mean, I still don't think the queer baiting is going to be, like, fundamental to the episode or whatever, right? No, I mean, like, I like, think there are episodes where moments. it's fundamental. But then, like, it comes to the thing where I... I was talking about in the past where it's like I don't want to label something as homophobia if it's literally just a gay character or something or like a gay event. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, if they're having a pride parade, like that's not homophobic. Right. So, I don't know. I'm curious about how it's gonna go in the future because like you know, there's layers to it. Yeah, I feel like, yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess, I feel like there's a difference between, like, like, just, like, 
sincerely were just developing Cass and Dean's relationship to be deeper. Yeah. And like, haha, they're gay. Like, I feel like we will be able to tell to tell the difference. Okay. Well, right now I'm going for a Juan. Okay. That's my final. All thing. right. I'll I'll go for that. Okay. So, right. um, I am DB. This one has gotta be I. Like, I cannot think of a reason for it to not be. I mean, people didn't like Jump the Shark because they thought they didn't just didn't like Adam. Like, maybe they just don't like Adam again. Yeah. Okay, what's your guess? I don't... Like, I do think this is, like, a good up. Ep- okay, and it's pretty action-heavy, and that usually bodes well. <laughs> For audiences as well. But I just... I don't know if it gets, like, nine or above, actually, though. I'm gonna... I'm gonna go with an 8.8, the same as my bloody Valentine. Okay, I'm going to go for a... I'm gonna go high. I'm going to go for a 9.2. Okay. Okay, Okay, let's see. Oh my god! It's an 8.8! Hell yeah, Are you, baby. What did you guess? What did I say? You guessed 8.8? Yeah. Wow, good for you. Wow. Good for me. This indeed. one is saying the plot is too compressed. Okay, I, I give a I shit. I don't think that is true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one is like, on a rewatch, I'm kind of frustrated with how the show glorified toxic family love. Yeah, that's true. I think it was the previous I, or this episode like in which Sam says he was wrong for running away to Stanford. He wasn't. No, sure. I guess the other thing is the who is the is the who the hero, hero thing. Hero. Of course, it's a show. I'm just pointing things out, necessarily complaining, not necessarily complaining. <laughs> this is our entire podcast. <laughs> Don't worry, we can complain for you. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, so true. He is also a huge hypocrite who says he wants a normal life for Sam, but only if he is dead, because if not, he wants Sam tethered to him, like, in season eight. Say that. Oh, this one, like, you know the, like, the the reviewer who always puts the Brazilian title in the uh-huh. uh, in the review? They hate this episode, and they have been hating season five, They've like, in general. They've been hating the angel demon yeah. storylines a lot, yeah. I'm surprised people don't like it as much. It's a bit of a Tumblrina episode, perhaps. Is it? In th- in what what makes an episode a Tumblrina episode? I don't know. It moves the characters instead of the plot, maybe. Yeah, I did not consider the action scenes. There were. I mean, Cass literally ripped off his shirt, and then like <laughs> sigilled himself off that thing. So like, I don't know, man. Two people have said, like, oh, boo-hoo, Adam, you had to make your own dinner. Like, Sam and Dean have been through way worse, which I think is a fascinating attitude to have, like, <laughs> in two different reviews. <laughs> We're a child. <laughs> God. Well, um, that's it for this episode of Bus Asian Beauties. Next time, we will be discussing Season 5, Episode no, 90. No, do we have to? Terrible. We could just skip it. Like, really, we can't. Like, we control this podcast. But we said we probably shouldn't, though. We do. We do say that at the beginning. I say every episode of Supernatural from start to finish. I promised. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we'll have to change our intro and everything. I mean, you're already changing our title, probably. So, like, (laughs) probably. No, we're not. Well, what if? <laughs> we're not. Follow us on social media. We are on Tumblr at bestasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is babpod, B-A-B pod. Thanks to everyone who's donated to our Kofi, like for real, for at real, ko- real. ko-fi.com slash bestasianbeautiespod, which is where our outtakes live. And check out our merch at babpod.redbubble.com. Uh, you can email us any feedback, comments, or inquiries, or greetings for our 100th episode uh, at bustasianbeautyspod at gmail.com. 
again thank you so much to everyone who has listened to us through this whole time thank you yeah, thank you thank it's you it's been like two years of our lives and also your lives yeah and that's pretty crazy yeah and it's been nice to do this every yeah. week it's been good it's been uh yeah see you guys next time bye How 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 long Ooh. like timeline have we been doing this? We started in January 2022. Um, so it's like a year and a something, right? That's a, no no no. Um, it's been 2 years January in something. 2 would be 2 Damn. years and a half. It's, it's, it's yeah. just 3 years to do one third of the podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're going to be here for a decade. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I thought I, I correct. Always, that is how math I works. Always, Two and a half times three is ten. I always thought that like the six more years thing is a joke, but like it probably is no. a joke because we're gonna be here for seven more years. It seems like. I mean, that's also with the fact that we were doing two episodes a week for part of the earlier oh weeks. Yeah, but we also quit like for a bit. We didn't quit. We took a break. We did quit for a bit. We took a break for a bit. Yeah. Oh my god. That's true. It wasn't quitting. We were always gonna come back to you, baby. Eligible for like (laughs) candidacy for many uh, uh, government positions by the time we finish this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, and you'll never take any of them because of this podcast. Just so everyone knows, if the episodes with Babbot ever get taken down it's because i either acquired a nice job (laughs) or um i've entered the government which is the worst job of all time so yeah yeah it's never gonna be taken now because i'm never gonna have a nice job or go to (laughs) government (laughs) well like a nice job that has like a background check yeah, probably, right? They'd probably be like, what the fuck is this? But they also, mm. they won't find it, because I don't use, like, my name. Yeah, it's not your legal name. Yeah. But, like, I'll introduce myself, and I'll be like, you can call me Gray. Yeah. And they'll be like, why do you have a podcast with your friend Crystal <laughs> about Supernatural called Boss Station? <laughs> <laughs> what if we, like, changed <laughs> What if for the 100th episode we change the name of the podcast? To what? <laughs> okay, here's here's the actual 100th episode. Thank you to our audience. If you have any ideas for anything we can change our name, the name of our We're podcast. We're gonna have to redo our logo. Right <laughs> no, we'll 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 have the same logo. But we will have like a we will messily scratch out the Bastation <laughs> beauties and it will be a different name. This is All right. This is like partially a joke. But if someone recommends a really wonderful name, I'll even consider it. So like, still hit us up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll consider <laughs> it if it's wonderful. Yeah. So it has to be really good. And I think the technique for this is just throw everything at the wall. Just send yeah. whatever is on your mind. And if it hits, it hits. Crystal just said, we should name our podcast Bus Asian Beauties. And I was like, haha. And now we're here. So, you know, yeah. anything could happen. Yeah. I know we have, like, you know, we have completely removed ourselves from rubbish. Mm. But every multiple times, I still think about when you were brainstorming for the title, which I couldn't participate in. Yeah, because of how you didn't know anything about Gomez. Yeah. And you were like, what should we name it? And I said, why don't we just name it Ineffable Bus Station <laughs> And you said, no. <laughs> so that, what a missed opportunity that was. We're going to change the name of this supernatural podcast to Ineffable Busty Asian Beauties for the 100th. Exactly. That's what we're going to do. But we can't. But you know what? If enough people like, comment, subscribe. What? Should we be promoting the podcast more? What do you think? I feel like we should. This one? (laughs) 
<laughs> Don't say it like that. The only that. one we have. <laughs> yeah. No, don't say that about this podcast. <laughs> don't talk about her like that. Interesting pronouns for this podcast. Yeah, Neither of us like, have those. No, yeah. But so it we feels can complete right. the basic trifecta, you know. Yeah. She was meant to be Danica. Yeah. But she left. <laughs> but Danica so. left. Assigned female at Danica leaving. <laughs> this podcast. People don't even know that, like, Danica you really edited was supposed to, <laughs> Danica really was supposed to be a permanent post in Bad Plot. Like, for real, for real. She was, yeah, she was and supposed then, to join in season four, but she quit in the middle of 402. <laughs> <laughs> Not even the middle. I think we weren't even in the episode yet. We were still talking about the title that is no. a reference to the. No, great- we were in the middle of it. Because she quit because she realized that she no, didn't no, no. have an opinion on what Dean's hair looked like. No, it was like not the middle of the episode. Like, what I'm saying is, if it's a two hour episode, she didn't even make it to the one hour mark. Like, she Fair. was like 20 minutes and like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Yeah. Honestly, it's crazy that we I was able to pressure her into joining at all. God, RVF is so funny. <laughs> I saw that post you were blogged. What does that mean? <laughs> the cockles post? The, yeah, I mean, I went to OP and it said okay. cockles. What is the three least ordered okay, menu so, items thing? So, like, when they first, around the time they first met um, in, like, season four... Jensen oh, and this Misha happened went, for real. <laughs> yeah, Jensen and Misha went out to like a, a like a restaurant in Calif in not California, Canada. It's so scary and it's to like, hear you talk just just use their first names only <laughs> and together like that. <laughs> yeah, can, you, can you say Jensen Ackles and Misha <laughs> Collins, please? Thank you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, and I will in fact do this. Anyway, um. So while in the restaurant, um, they sat at the table and like, um, it it was kind of like a quirky restaurant. And Misha Collins was Thank like, you. "Hey, Jensen Ankles, uh, let's order some food." And then they called the waiter over, and Misha Collins told the waiter, "Like, why don't you give us the three least ordered items in the menu?" Mm. Uh, and then they did, and then like. They talked about this in the con- in a con because they were like, "Oh my god, remember that meal we had?" And there was this like really weird thing that they served. Uh-huh. Um, anyway, ten years later, they went back to the restaurant and they sat at the same table. Yes. And they they took the same angle of the photo, and Jensen Ackles posted it on Instagram like before and after, like ten years. Mm. So, yeah, people are like, that's kind of crazy. Kind of. I mean, I think the asking the waiter to do that was kind of crazy because that's, like, the items it's going to take the longest to make because, like, none of the ingredients are prepped. Maybe, yeah. I know I'm not sure how restaurants work. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to have this information forever in my brain. And you will, well, too. Congratulations. No, I'm gonna forget. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, you think you would forget, and then somebody yeah. brings it up, like, that Tumblr post, and you will remember. You will remember. All right. Okay. You know, in, in a few years, when I do remember, I'll be in pain, but for now, I'm gonna choose to believe that I'm gonna forget. Anyway, is this all gonna go into the coffee? Maybe we should put this at the end, just as, like, a... Thank you for the 100. <laughs> sure. Yeah, the most important <laughs> thing that we could give our audience is uh, fucking the cockles information. Uh, cockles. <laughs> yeah. I'm not actually sure if I get most of those details correct. I'm pretty sure I do. But, like, yeah, maybe not. Yeah. And if you know what? Maybe I don't get all of the details correct. But if anyone was like, hey, Gray, you got it wrong. <laughs> this is actually what happened. It's like, what are you doing at the devil's sacrament? So, like, yeah. no one's going to indict themselves in that way. 
Indeed. Or maybe they will. Feel free to um, <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. I'm not sure. Um, other things that you can do to contact us, probably. Thank you. And thank you for the 100. Eee. Yeah.